Freedom, man. That's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. listening to what on earth is happening this show will discuss the topics of human consciousness mind control natural law the occult and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of earth what on earth is happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches it's critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. Welcome one and all. You're watching What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website, whatonearthishappening.com. Ladies and gentlemen, government is slavery. And here on What on Earth is Happening, we are ending slavery one mind at a time. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is episode number 256 of What on Earth is Happening. Today is Sunday, May 29th, 2022. We have a great show lined up for you here today. I'm going to be interviewing one great work network content creator, Bill Church, on the show live today. We are going to be talking about esoteric knowledge, the importance of community, and the one great work. That is coming up on this edition of What on Earth is Happening. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know I've been going through some pretty difficult times. Uh, I have not had much time to put toward the What on Earth is Happening cause. I've been dealing with a lot of personal issues. Uh, this week I had a huge scare with my pet. My dog, my little chihuahua Cheddar, had to have surgery. And uh, it was pretty touch and go there for a while, but she did pull through and is still with us and recovering. So I'm really, really glad to be able to report that. Uh, but it has uh, really, um, it was scary there for a while. And, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people forget that I deal with uh, all the same human problems and uh, events that go on with everybody else's life. Uh, nothing insulates me from that or makes me special or different than anyone in that regard. And, um, you know, I ask people to be patient with me uh, as I go through these, uh, you know, these things in my personal life. Again, I haven't even told the entire story of what else is going on because quite frankly, it brings out the ugly side in me. And uh, I would rather just focus on uh, doing the great work and uh, not really uh, festering in that. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I'll keep that personal and private for now. But, you know, just realize that uh, what on earth is happening right now is not the uh, quintessential thing that is going on for me personally. Uh, just be patient with me in that regard. That doesn't mean I'm out of the fight. It means that I do have to divert some energy toward other issues in my life uh, because uh, I live a very human existence just as everyone else does. So I just wanted to reiterate that. And I want to go over to uh, my slides for some housekeeping and then we'll bring Bill Church onto the show. So here we go. Again, thank you to Will Keller for the great artwork he's been providing for the What on Earth is Happening podcasts. Again, today we're going to be talking about esoteric knowledge, community, and the one great work with my special guest, Bill Church. What on Earth is Happening is operating this season on a streamlined format with myself producing in chair without a setup crew and a uh, production crew. 
We're on a six month on, six month off schedule, probably from here on out. I'll be dedicating the first half of the year to What on Earth is Happening shows, and then the second half of the year to the How to Become the True Media seminar. So we are broadcasting January through June, and then July through December is the How to Become the True Media seminar. The seminar is coming at us with uh, great speed. So for those who want to enroll and haven't yet, I'm going to say we're probably around over 90%, almost 95% capacity for the seminar. So folks, if you're going to do it, now is the time. That's all I have to say. Enrollment could close early at any time. Uh, it's scheduled to close July 4th. Uh, I'm almost certainly going to say we probably will close early. So do not wait to enroll or you may, may get shut out of the seminar this year. Uh, I just want to put that out there for people so that they don't complain when I close enrollment. And when I close enrollment this year, I will not be in reopening it. For anyone who is late, you will have to wait until the uh, 2023 How to Become the True Media Seminar, if there is one, uh, based on how things are going in the world. Uh, you know, societal collapse and war really, truly could be coming at any time. This is something we'll probably be talking about today. Uh, so I really would not wait. You know, if you want to learn to become a whistleblower, if you want to learn to become someone who is a truth teller uh, via modern technology, uh, now is your opportunity. And uh, this is going to be a 23-week technology seminar hosted via the Telegram platform. And it will be taking place every Monday evening from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Three hours of class instruction. Every Monday, July 11th, uh, from July 11th, 2022, through December 12th, 2022, for a total of 23 class sessions. We do open the seminar one hour early to allow people to show up and be on time. And then we break up into an informal discussion group after 11 p.m. And usually I will let that run for at least two hours. So minimum until 1 a.m. Eastern time. Sometimes I'll let it run an additional three hours. It depends on, you know, what I want to do each week, um, you know, and how I want to handle it. So at least two hours of informal discussion after each class session. There is limited space available. As I said, enrollment Internet enrollment closes July 4th. If you are going to enroll via check or money order, which you can find out about uh, when you click into the enrollment uh, page uh, to email me to get the uh, mail-in address. If you are going to enroll via mail-in, via check or money order, I will need to receive that enrollment donation bef by June, I'm sorry, by July 1st. So, if you're enrolling via check or money order, you have to get that to me by July 1st. If you're enrolling via internet, enrollment closes July 4th. If I decide to close it early, I'm just going to announce that on the website, take the enrollment button down, take the enrollment page down on gifts, and that will be it. Enrollment will be closed. As I said, we're about around 90 to 95% capacity right now. So fair warning. Uh, for more information on this great seminar coming up, which will be a tremendous learning opportunity for everyone who's involved in it, visit the, the, in, uh, the seminar website at howtobecomethetruemedia.com. Once again, howtobecomethetruemedia.com. You can click through to the enrollment page from there. Please do visit the One Great Work Network at onegreatworknetwork.com. Fantastic content creation going on there by our great 60 content creators. And uh, everyone has a blog where you can even donate to individual content creators. That's what this whole project was about. Highlighting other people's work and helping them to get resources to continue their great work, their contributions toward the one great work. So check out the One Great Work Network, of course, what on Earth is Happening is simulcast live on there each week. Visit the website onegreatworknetwork.com. The What on Earth is Happening IPFS project is a private project to attempt to get all of 
my material that I've done over all of the years that I've been doing What on Earth is Happening, all my presentations, all my podcasts, uh, all my interviews, up onto the IPFS network, which is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed uh, network where censorship becomes virtually impossible because it is dis distributed across the entire network, the information. If you, you have a 200 megabit per second or greater upstream or upload direction bandwidth for your home internet connection, then you are initially qualified to take part in the IPFS project for What on Earth is Happening. Visit whatonearthishappening.com slash IPFS. You can fill out the form there and get the PDF document with preliminary requirements and equipment that is listed in the PDF document. And if you do qualify for all of that, we will onboard you to our IPFS project. Again, the people who have responded, I will be getting to you. I know I've been saying that, but uh, unfortunately, life has been intervening. And, um, you know, things are going pretty rough. Um, there's other things that even people, you know, that just occurred today, that people who even know me don't know that occurred. And... Um, you know, it's going to add more of a, of a monkey wrench in my plans, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, I'm not so sure that a lot of this, uh, you know, isn't deliberate. I know it starts to sound conspiratorial and possibly even paranoid, but um, especially in the um, financial arena of hurting finances, um, that's what this is really ultimately all about. They want to hurt people in the wallet to try to take them out of the game financially so that they can't continue their work or they can't even continue the level of work that they were doing. Uh, and um, that gets, uh, gets backed up and gummed up and uh, possibly even, even slowed down or stopped. It's not going to stop me. Uh, your, their efforts will ultimately go to waste, but uh, they can slow people down. And uh, right now, that's uh, seemingly what is going on is uh, my efforts have to unfortunately move at a slower pace right now because of things that are going on. And that's just how it has to be, unfortunately. So again, uh, I ask people to be patient uh, with me and what's going on with me. And if you don't understand that, uh, you know, oh, well, tough. Uh, get as angry about it as you want. But uh, guess what? Um, you know, uh, I have to deal with life just like you do and just like everyone else does. And so that's how it has to be. Uh, and it's just going to be like that. Uh, so, you know, for people that want to want to say I'm not doing enough, uh, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about and you don't know what's going on in my personal life. So how about you just shut the fuck up about it? And it's a shame that I have to just be like that and say it like that. But sometimes you just have to be a dick about it, you know, and that's just how it's going to be. Like, nobody's going to tell me I'm not doing enough. I've done more than most people will in a hundred fucking lifetimes, you know, and uh, me and Bill can talk about that today and about what is really required as far as effort goes. And he'll he'll explain to you and, and tell you what, you know, what my efforts are here and what I do for because people don't know. They think they know and they have zero idea. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, all I have to say that the people say, do this, do that, uh, you know, hurry, uh, put, put this out, put that out. You'll have to fucking wait and it'll happen at my pace. And that's just how it fucking is. So get over it. So, you know, I've said it nicely and I've said it like an asshole. So take your pick. Regarding the uh, two awesome conferences that I'm going to be taking part in uh, this fall. The first is the Freedom Under Natural Law Conference. This is uh, Funnel 2, coming at us September 10th and 11th, 2022. The, um, the uh, tagline is going to be United for Freedom, Focused on Action. So, Unity, Focus, and Action is the theme for this year's Freedom Under Natural Law 2 Conference, September 10th and 11th. A slew of phenomenal speakers. I'm very uh, glad to be part of this awesome event. Check it out at the conference website, freedomundernaturallaw.com. Once again, freedomundernaturallaw.com. Really looking forward to being a part of Funnel 2. And of course, the Shattering the Illusion Conference. This is the inaugural Shattering the Illusion event. It's a one-day online event about natural law, true anarchy, 
consciousness, mind control, and the occult. Featuring uh, a whole lineup of awesome speakers, many of which are on the One Great Work Network. September 24th, 2022, a couple weeks after the Funnel 2 conference. For more information on this awesome event, please check out shatteringtheillusion.info. Hopefully I will come up with my general themes, uh, possibly my um, uh, title card before What on Earth is Happening uh, 2022 season is over. I'm not promising that, but hopefully I'll be able to announce what I'll be talking about at these events. I haven't fully decided that yet. Uh, I'll be working on that over the next couple of weeks and uh, coming up with at least um, topics, uh, if not, um, you know, presentation titles and title cards. So hopefully I can announce that before this season is out. I can announce in a, in a couple of weeks, not next week, but uh, I believe two weeks from now, uh, I'll be interviewing Benny Wills from the One Great Work Network uh, on what on earth is happening. So look for that in a couple of weeks. Next week, I haven't decided what the theme of the show is going to be, but uh, I will be coming up with something for next week. Uh, probably one of the topics that I discussed in the last few weeks here at What on Earth is Happening that I want to cover before this season is over. We will be taking calls in the third hour of the show with my special guest, Bill Church, for this episode. So if you want to call in to talk about uh, anything that Bill and I bring up on the show today and ask Bill any questions or make any comments, you can call in via Discord. We will be taking your calls via the Discord platform on the What on Earth is Happening Discord server. You can go into the Discord server for, for call-in at whatonearthishappening.com slash discord. Or if you are already listening on the What on Earth is Happening website at whatonearthishappening.com slash show on the show page of What on Earth is Happening, you can click on the Discord widget underneath the player and that will take you into our Discord call-in room. The ARC 2.0 drive is currently available. This is an ongoing offer. I will continue to offer this drive into the indefinite future. It is a repository of information that I've collected from the internet over, uh, you know, close to 20 years. Uh, if not, you know, more, actually a little bit more than 20 years. So I call it the amazing repository of knowledge. It is a two terabyte drive. It's 2.0 because the first incarnation of it was a one terabyte hard drive. I added an entire terabyte of information to the original drive and made it a two terabyte repository of information. If you want to take me up on this, this drive consists of 26,000 audio files, 9,500 books, and 3,400 videos from my own personal archive of research gathered over the years. And copied onto the two terabyte drive that you send to me. There are rigid shipping instructions to protect your property that you're going to be sending to me and I'm going to be sending back to you filled with knowledge and information. If you want to take advantage of this fantastic offer of information that will totally wake you up, totally inform you, totally give, give you an entirely new worldview, and this is the problem, folks. Bill and I are going to be talking about this. People don't have enough knowledge. They believe that they do, and yet they don't. I see it every single day. I go to meetups where people just do not have the information that they require, and yet they believe that they have enough information. There's, let me tell you something, folks. There are gaps in almost everybody's knowledge that you could park an aircraft carrier in, okay? And that's the problem, is that we're not on the same page when it comes to knowledge. We're not on the same page when it comes to the information gathering that must be done. That's called the grammar step of the trivium process. And most people are, have not completed step number one of the trivium. And if you don't complete step number one, if you don't have the grammar, don't proceed to step two, because your, your logic is going to become flawed at that step. You're not going to have accurate understanding. And then certainly you shouldn't act, which is step three of the trivium, because your actions are going to be out of alignment with truth. They're going to be out of alignment with true wisdom. Okay, your rhetoric's going to be way off. 
And that's what I see. This is the overarching problem that I see. And again, Bill will bring this up. We'll talk about this a lot on this episode. That many people are acting 100% out of alignment because they don't have enough information. They haven't gathered the esoteric information that needs to be gathered from an eclectic variety of sources. They're not even at that that stage, the, the grammar stage. They don't have their grammar under them, and they're trying to apply logic or understanding and then move to rhetoric or, or action when they should not move past step number one, which is accumulating information and taking it into yourself. Then you move to step two and you weed through that information and you weed out logical inconsistency so that you come to an accurate understanding of what's real. And then you come to an accurate understanding of what must be done and then you do it. We're nowhere near that. We're nowhere near that process as, as a body of humanity. Not even as a movement of people who say they want freedom. And until we do have that information, until we do bring that knowledge into ourselves and take it in in its, in its completeness, in its entirety of what's important, uh, don't expect to understand what's really going on and certainly don't expect your actions to have any uh, true bearing on a solution, which is what we ultimately say we want. Don't expect that. Not without the knowledge first. So the ARC is a good step toward closing the gap in that in that knowledge gap that I talked about between people who really do accurately understand what is going on and have that knowledge versus those who don't and unfortunately believe that they have enough information when they don't see that's the problem you know and it's hard to get through to ignorant people it's hard to get through to people that think that they've studied enough and that they've gathered enough and they understand enough when the people who really have see the glaring holes in their argument. They see the glaring hole in their knowledge base. You see how ignorant they are. And they're talking like they're the wise ones who know what's going on. And it's a problem, folks. It's a problem. You know, because then they're susceptible to all other kinds of nonsense and mind control and psyops. They're susceptible to all of it because they don't know enough about themselves, let alone know enough about the enemy's tactics. And what's going on in the world truly. They don't have that knowledge. Not in its entirety. They have it in drips and drabs. They have it in fragmented broken pieces. Like the saying goes. Don't take shallow drafts from the Pyrian Spring. You have to drink deeply from it. The fount of knowledge. Only when drinking tiny little bits of it. Is going to make you drunk with the illusion of knowledge. With the illusion of wisdom. And only drinking extremely deeply to your total fullness is going to sober you once again and make you really understand what the problem is and what the solution is. And that's what the ark can help you to do. Okay? I'm not guaranteeing that. It's what you do with it. Okay? I could put the knowledge in your hand and you might not do anything with it. But this is at least the grammar in hand. That's, that's all I can promise you that it is. Whether you understand what it means or not will be up to you and how voraciously and how in a dedicated way you take in this knowledge into yourself. And then maybe you'll come to an accurate understanding. But the offer is on the table. Whatonearthishappening.com slash ARC. I've been getting so many, uh, you know... Request for the ARC offer. I, I think I sent out at least nine this week again. It's amazing what, what is going on as far as people at least wanting this information. So keep it up, folks. Uh, I like sending the, the, these out, copying them and sending them out. Makes me feel good because it makes me feel like more information is going out every single day. And that's going into more people's minds. And hopefully that equates to transformation in consciousness. If you want to get any hard copies of my presentations on DVD or flash drive, if you want to get all my information on the One Great Work collection, Solid State Drive, or some promotional items like t-shirts, um, stickers, buttons, keychains, coasters, etc., please visit my What on Earth is Happening donation gifts area at gifts dot what on earth is happening dot com once again gifts dot what on earth is happening dot com 
I did get in touch with the t-shirt company I deal with for my shirts. The delay is because, unfortunately, supply chain issues have made many of the shirt colors unobtainable. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's what's going on and why they took a while to get back to me. I am going to have to rework my t-shirt order early this week, and I am only going to be able to procure black t-shirts for this order. And guess what? Unfortunately, right now, that's how it is. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to stay with the company that I'm working with, and we are just going to print black shirts for now. When they can get, when supply chains get better, if they do, we'll get the other color shirts and we'll order them up. But for now, I'm going to place a large order of black shirts, uh, one color with white print. We'll have to keep it simple for now. We're in tough times. We ha often are right now going to have to take what we can get. And that's what's going to have to happen. So if anybody wants to complain about it, shut the fuck up and keep it to your fucking self. How about that? Let's just go right to being the dick. And that's just how it is. And we'll get a better palette of shirt colors when the shirts are available. But for now, it's going to be black shirts with white ink. And that's what it'll be until supply chain issues improve. So look for new black t-shirts coming at gifts.waterandearthishappening.com probably within three weeks to a month's time because I can finally actually input the order and you know start to pay for it and get the, get the shirt started printing this week. I wanted to do that a few weeks ago. It took this long to even find out that there were supply chain issues. We're going to resolve that by just printing a bunch of black shirts this week and that's how it's going to be for a little while. So check out gifts.waterandearthishappening.com. We definitely will have t-shirts shortly. Definitely by the time Water and Earth is happening, uh, you know, season uh, 2022 uh, is in the books. And uh, there's still plenty of other uh, items up there that you can give a donation for. Gifts.waterandearthishappening.com. If you want to make a, instead, uh, a straight donation that goes directly to the cause of what on earth is happening and the one great work network. You can visit what on earth is happening.com slash donate three online payment methods, uh, cash app, G pay and wise, uh, wise has been working out really, really well for our international, um, supporters. Okay. Uh, they seem to like the platform and are using it quite a bit, but we also offer cash app and G pay for us users and some international users are capable of using G pay and cash app, but, um, uh, those three payment options are there, uh, donation options, as well as nine cryptocurrencies that I now accept for donations, check and money order. If you want to do it the old school way, which is fine by me. And also our Amazon technology wish list, which is still currently empty because people have gotten us all the technology items that we have put on that list. So thank you. You know who you are, everyone who donated, you keep this effort going. You keep What on Earth is Happening going. You keep One Great Work Network going. So thank you very much for those who wish to donate. WhatOnEarthIsHappening.com slash donate. Thank you to everyone who has from the bottom of our hearts. That's all the housekeeping I have. Let me get set up and jump over to my special guest, Bill Church. Give me a moment. So I take my guests and callers on the discord platform i bring that into my whole setup via ndi so i have to bring in a usb headset here and i'm going to switch over on my laptop over to bill and i'm going to unmute bill give me a moment And then I'm going to switch over to Bill in window here. Ladies and gentlemen, one great work network content creator, Bill Church. Bill, welcome to What on Earth is Happening. Hey, thank you, Mark. And not only am I on What on Earth is Happening, but I am in your house yes. right now here in Philadelphia. <laughs> I'm glad that you made it into town. I'm glad that we got a chance to hang out. And I'm very happy that you were able to come on the show for an interview today. So, uh, Bill, I'll, I'll just give you the f floor and let you bring up whatever topics you want to discuss here on What on Earth is Happening. My friend, the floor is yours. 
All right, man. Well, first off, I want to say thank you, Mark, for all that you do, man. And I didn't realize um, offline we've been discussing some of the issues that you've been dealing with. And um, it actually brings, it illustrates my point more about what we, in my opinion, what we really need. And that is the, the community. And how do we form this community? And, and that freedom uh, under natural law dot com, that, that event that you're going to be attending to, I really like that tagline, man. Isn't that great? Unity, I mean, the f- focus, action. That's right. The, the first funnel conference was just a fantastic event. I thought it was organized very well. I loved all the speakers. I even brought a couple of the speakers that I was not uh, as familiar with onto the One Great Work Network after hearing them speak at Funnel uh, One. Uh, So I'm really looking forward to taking part in that event. I think it was done the right way. Uh, And um, I, you know, uh, really am uh, glad that they're continuing it and doing another one. Uh, You and I were talking behind the scenes that, uh, you know, I may go back on my promise uh, at some point. I'm not promising anything just yet, but I may go back on my promise never to get involved in conference organization again, just to tease a little bit. Uh, I'm not promising anything, but... uh, there are, uh, there are rumors uh, floating about that we may at some point do another event somewhere here local to the Philadelphia area, and that's all that I will say right now. Uh, I'm not promising that that's going to happen, but we'll talk about it with some of the people who might make it happen, and I'll see where it can go. Well, and I think we should start with that unity, right? Sure. And bringing people together and realizing, man, we're all different, but that's the beauty of it is that we all have attributes uh, to us as individuals and we all have wants and desires. And my wants and desires are just as important to me as your wants and desires are to you. Sure. And even though we, we know and love each other, we still have different wants and desires. Of course. Right, and we have different skill sets. And ladies and gentlemen, Mark, and I've told you, that, I've told you this before, but even today, before we started this show, and you guys, like seeing in knowledge through experience gnosis right we talk about that all the time and um you know getting out in the world and seeing it but also seeing what mark has to go through to set up these shows uh it's pretty mind-blowing dude like it's very involved and very deep and and the redundancies that you have in place and it's just really really thoroughly thought out and organized and When I first found you, man, and the information that you presented kind of filled in the gaps, just like we were talking about the gaps. And when you fill in those gaps, man, you have a much, um, a much more solid plane to exist on, right? If you have all these holes, I mean, you're, you're, you're balanced. You're not on easy and solid ground. That's right. It's a foundation that you're building everything else up on top of. If your foundation foundation isn't firm, if it isn't solid, if it isn't level, if it isn't strong, all the structures you build on top of that foundation are not going to be strong. They're going to be susceptible to collapse. And that's what we're trying to explain to people is that you got to get that broad knowledge base underneath you as a foundation. If you're going to accurately understand, you got to stand upon firm footing, upon the firm foundation of eclectic knowledge gathered, weeded through to remove logical fallacies and inconsistencies, and then fully understood as your foundational point, your structural foundational point. Then you go out into the world and you build your, your work on top of that, you know, through your action, through your behaviors in the world. So, Bill, I think that's a profoundly important aspect to to start talking about here today is that foundation of knowledge. And that's one of the first things that you wanted to get into. So I'll I'll let you continue to flesh that out. Well, and not only do we, you know, the foundation is absolutely it, but then we see um, foundational teachings on how we start the process of learning. And it's reflected in the tree of life, right? And uh, where we start the root, and then we move up, and and we can we ha- we have a choice, man. We can take the severe path, the fat path to severity, right? Path of mildness, and uh, and or we can take the path of of ease, right? Where it's 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 the middle simplistic path, and the middle way, yes. Yes, well, the middle way too, with the daat is represents what does it represent mark i would say that that is the straightest path to higher level consciousness because 
you're not taking the left-hand path or the right-hand path. I, I would look at the right-hand path as more of a uh, a religious path. It's more of a uh, standing fed. standing back and observing. You could look at it as a new, more New Age type thing. And I'm not saying that that's okay. what it's traditionally been viewed as. This is my interpretation of it. The left-hand path is certainly uh, much more rigid and, you know, uh, purely logical, more left-brained, right? But I think that the middle way is the most solid foundation, personally, because that's combining left and right brain approaches. That's saying, I don't want belief. That's saying, I'm not only going to rely on pure logic, but I'm going to combine logic and intuition. I'm going to combine science and spirituality. I'm going to take an mm -hmm. integral consciousness-related approach to moving forward and to enacting solutions. And even when understanding the problems, we have to take that integral and consciousness integrated approach. Uh, see, this is what I see lacking in the community. I, I, I feel that this is more why we're not forming a real true community is because most people are imbalanced in one form or another. And then they, they're not, again, filling in those knowledge gaps. You have a lot of people that approach it purely from financial, political, monetary viewpoints, and that's it. That They don't want to hear anything else other than that. When you start bringing up, you know, you have to do real work upon the self. You have to understand that this is about self-knowledge, right? They don't want to hear about that. Or many other people, they just want to fall back on traditional religious viewpoints where, oh, I have Jesus and that's enough. Uh, you know, I, I have the God of the Torah and that's enough. You know, I have Allah and that's enough. And, you know, enough for what? Yeah. That's what I, my question would be. Yeah. Enough for what? And they believe that's right? enough to enact a solution in the world based on the problems that they even see. When they don't even see the higher level problems, they don't even understand exactly. the operation of covert religion and the occult. Mm -hmm. they're, they're still operating that we put a new, uh, you know, uh, the right person in office and things are going to turn around for us. You, don't you know? You know, this is how right. many they people don't, they don't, are still operating. Yes, go ahead. Well, they don't. They have the erroneous belief that one man can rule over another. They still believe in authority. Many of them are still minarchists. They want more freedom, but they don't want real freedom. Right. They still hmm. believe that there can be authority and freedom simultaneously. There is no such thing. Well, there is no such thing well, as I'm as. A person who is being ruled over, meaning they're a slave, and freedom simultaneously doesn't exist. Well, and there's no guarantee of safety in a free society either. That's it. And that's what they don't, they don't want to acknowledge that. They, They'll trade safety. They want police still in many instances. Mm -hmm. And then they want to say those who don't want the police and don't support the police are somehow leftists. Fucking totally incorrect and totally fucking wrong. I'm not going to sit Absolutely. and listen to somebody say something that's completely wrong. I'm not a fucking leftist imbecile, no more than I am a radical right wing Im imbecile, because both of those camps are fucking imbeciles. And I'm not an imbecile. I know what's going on in the real, in the very real factual world of nature. Uh, because I was with the people who rule the society. I was with the people who are running our society and ruling our world. I know I didn't need it from book knowledge. Book knowledge helped me to understand what was really going on, but I was behind the scenes with those people, helping them to enact and carry out their agendas until I finally woke the fuck up. So, you know, the we people who are going to tell me, you know, who I am or what I experienced, sorry, nah, but we ain't playing that game, right? I'm not with this one. You're yeah. not playing that game, right? You could go play that game with some other fucking imbecile, but not with this one, okay? Because I lived it. That was my life experience. And nobody's going to tell me that my life experience was invalid or didn't happen. So, I, like I said, I challenge people who think that, come and say that right to my face, and we'll have words over it. And possibly well, some, some other things over it, but... You're not going to tell me my experience in my life as a man didn't occur. See, that's the difference between me and other people who just are seeing this from book knowledge or secondhand, experience, secondhand knowledge, it being related down to them from other people, and then they're, they're filtering it through that. 
vision, through that uh, perception, you know, then through their own perception, and then they, they, they theorize about it. That's why, you know, somebody this week said to me, oh, don't you talk about conspiracy theories on your show? And I said, no, don't put me in that camp. That's not what I do. Right. I don't I don't I don't conspiracy theorize. First of all, that's a CIA uh, it, uh, whole invention. The whole term. term is a CIA terminology to put people off, to, to, to make people think a conspiracy theorist is someone who makes up shit and then says just what their nonsense bullshit vision that they think is going on is. That's not what I do on what on earth is happening. And that's not what I've ever done on what on earth is happening since day one. I don't theorize about anything here. If I do theorize, I tell you there's some conjecture here. I'm going to speculate. And then I'll do that. But in general, there's no theorization taking place on what on earth is happening. This is recounting of life experience. This is talking about what is genuinely true in nature and discoverable in esoteric knowledge when you really dig deep enough to get that knowledge. And this is a science. This is a science of spirituality. This is a science of morality. This is a science of freedom. What on earth is happening has been since day one explaining to the public a science of how freedom actually works in any society, anywhere in the 3D universe. This is how it operates. And it's knowable, it's discoverable, and it's able to be harmonized with when you know how it works, you can harmonize your behavior to it. So, Bill, go right ahead and uh, your, your thoughts on that and if you want to add anything to that. Well, first off, that conspiracy ter theorist term is a catch-all intellectually lazy label that is, you know, laid out to people that are, I mean, it's a derogatory term for critical thinkers. Right. I'm a whistleblower. I'm not a theorist. I'm a whistleblower. Let's get that straight for anyone watching, okay? I lived the experiences that I lived in the occult and with occultists who are really running things. And I'm blowing the whistle about what happened and is continuing to happen in that entire covert world. Okay? So I'm not theorizing about any of it. I'm blowing a whistle. I'm a whistleblower. If you want to to put a tagline term on me, call me a whistleblower, call me an aggregator of knowledge, call me a do cultist, but don't call me a conspiracy theorist. Reserve that term for some other people who want to theorize. I'm not theorizing here. I'm telling the truth about what occurred and is continuing to occur that I know not from book knowledge, but from firsthand gnosis, from practical, knowledgeable experience in real life. That 99.9999% of human beings have never experienced and will never experience in their actual life. So go ahead, Bill. Well, not only that they don't experience, but I don't think that they're capable of acknowledging the depth of evil that exists in this world. Because it's natural for us to mirror and so if you're a good person, you think everybody's a good person. But it works the other way, too, man. If you're a shyster, you think everybody's a shyster. And if you guys haven't watched that show, I Am Fishhead, where they talk about the psychopathy and how one out of ten people uh, are on a pretty big uh, spectrum of the psychopathy without the ability to feel empathy, without the ability um, to, um, you know, just have compassion. And uh, to not know about these people gives them a huge, huge advantage. And the one thing that they don't want is to be called out. The one thing that they don't want is the truth. They want the darkness. They want to operate in ignorance and so that they can take advantage of, I mean, just the meek. And we talked about meek yesterday, right? The meek. And the, the Jordan Peterson uh, talks about the meek. And, and it doesn't mean the weak. It Well, I, I mean... It doesn't mean what people think it means by just by a weak person, the meek. What it means is that it is a person that has weaponry that is that won't use it, even when aggressed upon. And the meek shall inherit this earth. And what I refer to you, Mark, how, is how much control is warrior. being used? Your truth. How much control is currently being used by people? We are under duress, and our rights are being taken away from us now. And if anything, there is absolute self-control being utilized for people not to shed blood immediately when we have the right to how much self-control is being utilized okay you know you think about that you know 
we're, we're under far more duress than the colonists of the American Revolution and most colonies were outside of Massachusetts. You know, in Massachusetts, there was direct violence. Most other people weren't having direct violence done to them. You know, we're under more duress than most of the colonists prior to the American Revolution wa were, and were exercising more self-restraint than even they did back then. You know, but I, I think people have to consider the notion that it may come to full out open combat warfare, open rebellion. And I think they have to become comfortable with that notion. They have to, they have to get out of their minds that, that it may not go that way. Like we want to avert it going that way. We don't want that bloodshed, but that can't be taken off the table and said that, no, that can never occur. No, we will never do that. We have to keep that option on the table and theor look at the, the potentiality of when the time would be right for beginning something like that. And I don't think we're that far away from it, quite personally. I think people have to become comfortable with that. They have to say to themselves, you know what? This may be the only thing that gives future generations a chance at freedom. That's how the colonists uh, in the American Revolution looked at it. You know, and it may be no different today because if you just think about it, how far have we come in consciousness as an entire species? Mm -hmm. Not very far. Yeah. Well, and how many layers are, I mean, just with the technological revolution. And by the way, Mark, what does the tree of liberty need to be watered with? The blood of patriots and tyrants. See, it's not just one or the other. It's both. You know, that. that's right. People th are very naive about thinking that. Uh, anything else is really the price has been the price of freedom. The price of any modicum of freedom in human history has been bloodshed. And it's sad, but that's true. And if anybody doesn't understand that that's true, you don't understand human history. Any advance in freedom has come at the price of bloodshed. Now, what we're trying to do now is something that goes beyond that. We're trying to do something that goes such a step as an advancement, such a step up that bloodshed isn't required. That's mm -hmm. doing it the right way. Failure necessitates bloodshed. Failure in doing it the right way in consciousness necessitates the bloodshed. Mm -hmm. But then you have to just be comfortable with that. And you have to say, we lost in doing it the right way. We failed at that. And now it has to be done through bloodshed. You can't take the bloodshed option off the table. Because if you take that off the table, then the answer is, I'm capitulating to tyranny, I'm capitulating to slavery, and I'm just saying, that's okay. And that can just continue unabated and unchallenged, and that's never okay. There's nothing spiritual in that. There's nothing higher consciousness in that, you know? Picking a time that is right to begin a battle is one thing, that's strategy. But saying, I will never do that, is saying that you can never ever have the option of physical rebellion and I, that's what i'm saying the the quote unquote meek that we're talking about doesn't do that they don't take that option off the table they utilize it as the the uh method of last resort because they don't want to see it come to that and they're trying to avert that through proper moral education this is the real answer and the real solution is proper moral education you know, we need to step up and put, I'd say, I say my number 80 to 85 percent, 85 percent in that basket, 15 in the basket of defending physically, possibly coming to warfare, survivalist needs, etc. But if you're just putting all your effort into the survivalist camp, into the warfare, you're playing to lose. As I talked about with my guest Ivan Oyola last week, we can't play this battle to lose. Playing it to win means you're engaging the population. The population's ignorance is the real enemy. They're the, that's the primary enemy. The secondary enemy are the globalists, are the social engineers, are the dark occultists. We need to even stop looking at them. They're the mind controllers that are holding the bulk of human civilization, the bulk of humanity in abject ignorance through what they're putting into their minds and what they're telling them. We have to wage information warfare on the ignorance. We have to make it 
an, a, an actual operation of warfare, of, of, of tactical information warfare to morally educate the population. And yes, it can be done. It can be done because they're programmable and they're just being programmed by the evil people. The good people who claim to be good and claim to know what's going on have to get on the battlefield of getting into those people's minds and programming it with the truth. That is the only way they are going to turn their lives around and get engaged in the actual field of combat and get on that battlefield and start waging that warfare on the real enemy, which is ignorance, which is moral ignorance. Bill, I want you to um, talk about where you see people's level of moral ignorance, because um, you were telling me that you at one point did not see it as being as bad as after the whole, you know, coronavirus nonsense psyop uh, helped you to understand that it was. I'd really like you to speak to that to our viewing audience, because when you told me that it was very, very powerful to hear, although it's somewhat depressing it's somewhat dark profoundly sad. yeah it's sad, profoundly sad but but i'd like to get your take on that because when i heard it from you it was very powerful in in addition to being sad and, and depressing it's powerful because it, it helps to put into perspective what other people need to see and do it made me realize and gave me realize right to see the truth right and and i'm a humanitarian dude i'm a teacher i love people i just do and Mark, if people don't know this, but Mark calms me down. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I love it. I, I said to Bill, you know? who's calming me down, though? Right? <laughs> right that's know? good. I'm glad right, to hear that's that. It. That's why we need a community, man, because like, just like Mark with his, you know, and I know Mark's intense, but you guys, have you ever been to Philly? You know, that is, I mean, you guys oh. got to see that that Philadelphia is shining through to him, too. Like, this is how people oh. freaking walking down the street. Are you fucking kidding me, guy? Like, they say they help you, but they're going to tell you what the fuck you did wrong. <laughs> like, that's what in Philadelphia. Old here, Philadelphia right? was like that. New, new Philadelphia, unfortunately, is a communist stronghold, this, unfortunately. But old uh, Philly was much better. Well, and that's that's what we're talking about, man. So, I'd always hear you say, dude, on these on these uh, podcasts that we are so far from humanity being awake, and I just really didn't believe it because I just am that optimistic, dude. Then, the pandemic hit, and I saw people love their slavery, dude. I saw people that got off on telling others what to do because the government told them what to do, and it and and. The inability to not just think for yourself, but even to ask questions. And it broke my heart, dude. I've, my last couple of years of my life have been very, very profound. And I, I believe you, dude. Unfortunately, I believe you that we are, we're a lot deeper in this abyss um, than I thought, man. And well, it's the thing is, something. you don't even have to believe me, Bill. You saw it for yourself, and that's all I want people to do. And as dark as it may be, if we see it for ourselves, then we're in an empowered <sighs> position to do something about it, you know? That's right. But we see it for real, and that's that realized thing. And we need to be truth warriors, man. And that's what I call you a truth warrior. And we need to oppose evil in all of its forms, period. And, and that's where, as a community, and, and knowing not just about the, the esoteric knowledge that's out there, but there's a way to utilize this, you guys. There's a way to utilize these tarot cards. There's a way that you can ask questions and find out more about yourself. And, there, and the deeper understanding that you have of yourself, like even what the Oracle of Delphi says, you know, um, ye who, who seek to uh, you know, the, know the mysteries of the universe, if you do not find in your own house that which you seek, nor will you find it elsewhere. That's right. In you lies the treasure of treasures. Know thyself, and you shall know the universe and the gods. That's right. And, but I don't, I don't think people know that they can utilize this to know about themselves. They go elsewhere. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, too, is, is not just the importance of, of this esoteric knowledge, but how to use it 
to gain the true knowledge about yourself. And the more that you know yourself, the more powerful that you become, the more treasures that you will find. And just like in the Kabbalion, you know, the lips of wisdom are sealed, except to the years of understanding. And I'm a different person, dude. Like even before when I did the Free Your Mind podcast, like today, and I'll be starting to, to create more work for the One Great Work Network, some more content. But even after the last couple of years, I mean, I got pretty, I got pretty depressed, and I still am a little bit, man. And it's that's why I, I'm looking at you, and and that's why I'm saying, like, even when we spoke on the Discord a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, man, we need community. This this depression, this stress, as individuals. It's going to make us sick. Sure. It's, it's, you know? it's difficult yeah. to find in uh, major metropolitan areas, too. Some of the most crowded places on Earth can be some of the most lonely uh, because so few people are really uh, making an effort to truly understand that people feel isolated. I see people every day on social media that say they're isolated, uh, they're depressed, they're lonely. Um, That's right. You know, I, I you know I could just r relate to them because it's like I feel like I have very few people that I could ever count on. I feel like I have very few people who are here. No, I'm not talking about throughout the world. I'm talking about locally in physically my area, here. physically yeah. around me. You know, there's hardly anybody that I can have as as a, a confidant, as somebody to do projects with, etc. It's like I feel like almost alone all of the time you know and people don't want to get involved or stay involved and uh you know i'm in the middle of a very stressful situation with uh you know uh moving things uh you know that i have to move from a home uh to storage and i barely have any help doing it i have a couple of people and it's uh you know been a very very stressful uh, physically trying time where I hurt my back pretty bad and thought that, uh, you know, I might have permanently injured a disc in my back um, because mm. of trying to do too much myself with no help. And we're getting old, dude. We're getting older. I, I, don't, I don't even you look know? at it like that. I was really, you know, I, I'm, pre I'm still pretty damn strong even for my age. <laughs> but m the point is, I, I was just doing too much. I mean, try carrying like 50 contractor bags full of debris and trash uh you know because you want to try to get it you know removed in, in a reasonable time that i'm trying to do something on a time schedule and you just do a repetitive task like that and you can't really carry a contractor bag full of trash like in a truly proper position you kind of have to carry it either in front of you or off to one of your sides it'll injure your back doing it that much and you know that's just what happened because i don't have help you know, and yeah. it's just, uh, you know, that this goes to show you in a city, in a ma major metropolitan area of over 4 million people. I, you know, still am doing things like that because there's nobody else around. You know, uh, there's a, a couple of people, like I said, but it's, it's not enough. It's like, you know, I, you know, could get into other people's issues and problems, which I'm not going to do, you know, uh, but, you know, you, you realize there's just not that many people that want to help, that want, that care at all, you know? Yeah. And it's like, then you have people continuing to ask you to do more and more and more and more, and they don't even know what the fuck's going on in your life, you know? Yeah. It's like, or how about you do something? The people who ask yeah. for more to be done on our part, we're doing enough. How about you what? get involved? That's the whole fucking point of this whole show. The whole point of this whole show isn't to point fingers at me, the whole, I'm already doing it. The whole point of this whole show is to point the finger at yourself and saying, what the fuck have you done? You know, you don't need to look at Mark Passio and ask what he's done. You don't need to look at David Icke and ask what he's done or Alex Jones and ask what he's done or anybody else, people who are still here or who are gone like Jordan Maxwell, you know, or anybody else or William Bye -bye. Cooper. Yeah. You know, you, their work speaks for itself. You could go into all of their work and see how much proliferous work any people like that put out, whether you like them or you don't, you know, the answer is what fucking work have you put out, right? This That's is the right. whole idea. This is what Bill is talking about. This knowledge gets us to turn the focus inward. If we're paying attention to it, 
right? The occult information, the occult knowledge doesn't make us immediately do this, okay? It, it makes us do this and say, I have to look at what my contribution to the problem is and stop doing that. And then I have to look at what my contribution to the solution is going to be. Ask myself whether I've done one fucking thing to contribute to the solution. And be honest with myself about that. And then actually start to doing it and start contributing and keep going with those contributions. You know, that's what real occult yeah. knowledge does. That's how it really transforms you. Bill, your take on that? Well, and we have to keep the bloodshed on the table, man. Because this is something, do you think the other side has bloodshed on the table? They're already the committing bloodshed. They've already murdered millions Dude, of people. Their, you know? It's their default position, bro. And to not even think that that's on the table when that's their default position. Who was the globalist that was just interviewed by the uh, World Economic Forum? I can't recall uh, his the name. CEO of Pfizer. Yes. The CEO of Pfizer. Just said that their entire dream since beginning the WEF was to eliminate 50% of the population. And now, today, that dream is becoming a reality. How else could you possibly Roaring interpret applause. it? Yeah. Roaring applause, dude. Yep. Because so those people are just like, I'm going to be the half that's left and I'm going to be prosperous and it's going to be a bigger world for us. And we're just going to eliminate the useless eaters. This is what they think of people. This is what they think of everybody who's been silent. You know, this is what they think of and, you. Yeah. And they feel morally, uh, you know, they feel morally superior. And not only that, but I mean, when we look at, at, um, you know, when when this when this stuff is happening it's like i don't know it's just it's when do we draw the line you know and um how much and that's where how much that's duress where, are, are people already under how much threat of taking things away from you that they rightfully don't have a right to take how much threat of removing your rights are we already under how many, how many things are we already under that we are at the, at the point of a gun forced to turn over our wages, the fruit of our labor, paying taxes on property, which is an oxymoron. If something is already property, you can't tax somebody and tell them you could take it away. People still don't understand this. Property tax. I have people. That's where we should, like, just property tax. If we yeah. could fucking abolish that, dude, and really own your property. You don't own shit. Bill, and that's it, act, man. That's what activist meetups of people who say they want freedom. There are people who saying taxation and property taxes are perfectly viable, perfectly justifiable, perfectly uh, moral. They don't even understand property, or they and they don't understand taxation as violence and slavery. I don't understand how we're in an information age of information flow the way we are, and people can still exist with that level of ignorance and with knowledge gaps like that, that they don't understand that that's violence, that they don't understand that's the state of duress, the continually implied threat of violence upon your being. And your soul knows it, and your soul is trying to wake you up to it. And your soul doesn't want to sit and watch Netflix. And any time that you're disconnected and don't have a purpose, and you, you don't, don't know what to do, guess what you're looking for? Distractions. That's right. And you're looking to fill that, you know, but there is a way that we can get a foundation understanding or understood the foundational knowledge, the eclectic knowledge base that we need to advance our souls, man. And I think that's why we're here. Of course. Okay, first and foremost, you're not Mark. You know that? You're not Mark. That's called a name. That's right. That was handed to you by your parents. That's not who you are. You're not your body. That's right. You know, where I'm like, like my body will be there. No, I will be there. Right. right? Your, your body houses a spark of the divine. Absolutely. However you want to call it, whatever brings that life into this plane of existence. You, ladies and gentlemen, every single ear that's listening to this, are, you are eternal. Don't ever forget that. You are eternal. Your earthly body is going to return back to this and is it to this earth and not only that but this is all temporary it's ephemeral here today gone tomorrow 
you know? That's right. That's the first part and of stand. esoteric knowledge is understanding who we really are, that we're not these things. That's See, right. it's apophatic. Everything Bill was saying is apophatic. We are not this. We are not that. We are not any of those things. We're that which remains. And yes. then once you understand that, fear of death goes. And fear of death is the beginning of slavery, right? And the, and the letting go of the fear of death is the beginning of getting out of slavery. That's the beginning of true freedom. We have to let that fear go and realize that that form of death that we think of is an illusion. Well, and I look at martyrdom. Sure. You know, and that's what I'm looking like. And I don't mean it as a religious, you know, yes. religare, mind control aspect, but I'm looking at these people that have traded their life for the greater good or given themselves over and, and knowing, hey, look. And, and not only that, man, as I, as I age and as I... I watched my, my, my mom go to heaven. I watched my dad go to heaven. And I was right there with them as they transitioned. And I experienced that with, with my own eyes. And, and I called in, you know, we also have to remember that there is a metaphysical world out there. And I believe that there are spirit guides. I believe there are angels. I believe that there are uh, councils on the other side here that we can call forth. And I did that with my parents when they passed away. And any time that your parents go, I think that is a... a very stark reminder of your own mortality sure and and the, the limited time the ethereal time that you have on this plane and the time is what we call spiritual currency right That's the right. green stuff the stuff that we can get all day long um and there's a, the currency that pays the bills and buys the house or whatever in the physical right but we also have to remember that that currency there's also a currency that pays our mind uh, that pays our heart that pays our body Right. Right. You got boxing gloves downstairs. I see you got some exercise equipment sure. and stuff. And that's the exercise that we do. But we also have to do the inner size of working on ourselves and um, and coming together in unity and then focusing on that work and helping others gain more knowledge about themselves. And then and then once we have that, then we can take action and stand in truth. And they can absolutely have my earthly body. I can't think of anything else to lay my body on the line for that would be more admirable in my mind than freedom and truth and love. Well, you think about how many people here, how many people made that ultimate sacrifice, you know? I don't recall whether I brought it up last week, but I was talking about it with some people at, at a meetup. It's like people don't even understand uh, basic U.S. history who live here. Uh, and uh, in this very vicinity, um, just uh, to the south of Philadelphia, uh, Fort Mifflin. Um, and we're in South Philly right yeah, now, Fort, right? Yeah, Fort Mifflin uh, at the mouth of the Delaware River. Uh, you know, in the Revolutionary War, uh, Philadelphia was being bombarded by the British and their ships uh, coming in to take Philadelphia. They did eventually take Philadelphia. The uh, Continental Army and some of the founding fathers had to make a strategic retreat to York, Pennsylvania, which is about halfway between Philadelphia and Harrisburg. And um, while that retreat was taking place in order to give them enough time to, you know, uh, retreat from the British Navy and uh, infantry that was landing on the shores of Philadelphia and the surrounding area, uh, the, the uh, contingency of, uh, uh, you know, revolutionaries at Fort Mifflin had to stay there and fight till the last man. That was their orders to stay there and not retreat and allow those who were retreating to York to, to make it. And think about that. They knew they had no chance against the bombardment of cannonballs and other, fi you know, uh, you know, fire uh, bombardment of the British Navy. And they knew every one of them till the last man was going to die. And guess what? None of them retreated and they all stayed and fought till the last man died. Now that's sacrifice. We can't even that conceptualize that today. We can't even conceive well, of that, let alone have a bunch of people who would be willing to actually do that physically with their bodies. I mean, imagine that. You know, yeah, we have, we have, we have people it. stopping people from visiting their loved ones in hospitals. We have we have people order followers who are stopping parents from getting their children out of a hostage me. situation. Yeah. Oh, fuck them. Fuck them, dude. Imagine and the people this. that don't know this, you know, your, your kid is being shot up in a school in a PSYOP, and it's a PSYOP, dude, all these all these gun grab PSYOPs, and you go to get to save your kid, and this fucking cop tases you. Right. 
And like you, you said, know, a, a psyop. We, we I want to revisit that about the parents and and what the cops did, what these low life scumbag fucking pigs did. Who you know? Well, like I could say what I think should happen to them, but you know, it, it's like well, worse than any torment remember, imaginable should happen to these people while they're alive. Forget about what should happen to them after they die. But you, you just look at um, you know, um, I was talking about the uh, the the psyop nature of what just happened in this Texas school shooting. Whether you think that it's staged or not, r- irrelevant they are going to use what occurred and they want the maximization of death. That's why those low life trash fucking scumbag pigs were told to stand down and not do what should be their duty, which is to defend life. They're, they're not defenders of life. They're not the good guys. You're fucking low life scumbag fucking trash. You fucking low life pigs. Right. Dirty, rotten, Nazi, and communist trash order followers. You're cut from the same fucking cloth, low lives. And come and see One me personally that- if you have a problem with my words. Come right here to Philadelphia. Come and see me fucking personally. Okay? And I'll deal with you myself. Because you're trash to need to just be fucking dealt with. And you could imagine whatever the fuck you want. You could imagine whatever you want. Your low lives, your scum you the fucking low lives. Slavery in place. And You're the ones keeping slavery in yep. place, man. And th- the only thing that you could possibly imagine that that was done to do is maximize the casualty count, so that they can have a bigger outcry from the population. Do something. That's the dialectic. Yeah. Not see something that they shouldn't see. Right. On the back end right. of the of what is is of the op really itself. That's here. right. Correct. That's the op. The other That's question right. is how and does a how does a young teenager get resources like boom. he has? It's working part time at a fast food restaurant. Poor. Right. Working part time at a fast food restaurant has the uh, a truck the way he has can can afford what he can afford has firearms and All ammunition etc there's no way somebody's affording that on that type of a salary not happening well and just look at the catalyst that makes this happen is money of course the, ju- and know, then just and it, the man. payment of these pigs to say stop the families from going in there and rescuing their children stand down so that not the casualty count them, can go up them. yeah exactly do violence to them mm. you you fucking well, pigs force- are Fucking low life, immoral, scumbag, Nazi, fucking trash, and communist fucking trash. You're garbage as beings. You're garbage as you're, you're black hearted fucking hearts and souls. And there's no other way to say it to you, and nobody else will fucking say it that way. You're trashed. It should be fucking exterminated. Right. And some people take what Mark says is is harsh or whatever, but it's it's the truth. And not only that, but it's it's the way that he presents, you know, and that's a beautiful thing about it is that we all have a voice. We all have a heartbeat. We all have a unique pattern. Right. And we all have a way of presenting stuff that's going to co- correspond. But also, you know, it might it, some people might be turned off by Mark's approach, but you guys got to remember, too, is that he knows the depth of what he's dealing with. And there's a book out there called The Bright Side of Your Dark Side. And it's a it's a great book, man. It talks about without intensity and like especially with people that are very creative, they're putting their life energy and they're training their life to do this. Just like Mark, when I look around in this room of, Mar- of Mark's content that he has made thousands and thousands of hours of content here um you know what this has been mark's work and he has focused his life and um anything that that goes wrong like and i blow glass and so i have to do it like kind of a glass artist and watching this glass artist work on something that has taken him a month to 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 do and at the very end he does a a couple final moves and the whole thing shatters Mm. the passion that he had to create this and watching it just get destroyed in front of his face is going to bring about 
um, what people might conceive as a negative reaction, but what they don't realize is that this is a perfectly normal and acceptable reaction to somebody who is so passionate about what they do. And he doesn't and give so up. He then Mark, picks up, picks it up, and does right. it all over and we again. Start from the that's fucking it. beginning, that's dude. It. And so when you hear Mark, and I love Mark, and I know him, he's my friend, and that's why every time I'm in Philly, I come to see him because I have to because I. I the, one of the first things I saw of you was a cult mockery of the police and military. And I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, why do they wear a shield over their fucking heart? Why is that? Why why are they shielding their heart? Right. Why are they wearing these symbols? Why don't they know about that? And then guess what I did, dude? I walk up to a cop and be like, what is that symbol you're wearing? And do you know what the cop said? I don't fucking know. Get away, man. What are you doing? Yeah, they, they don't, don't even care, care or want to know. That's right. They have and no so respect that's... for themselves as a human being, as a soul. How could they possibly right. respect anyone else? That's why the police well, aren't think... owed any respect. See, everybody wants to go, oh, you have no respect. You're goddamn right I have no fucking respect for the police. Well, I have no lost. respect. That's... I'll have respect for someone when they respect themselves, when they know who they are, when they understand someone else's sovereignty, and when they respect that sovereignty, then you'll have my infinite respect as another sovereign being. You don't want to understand yourself. You don't want to do enough work to have self-respect upon yourself. You want to say, I'm just here to follow the orders of another fucking person for a paycheck. You're a low-life piece of fucking scumbag fucking trash. And I don't have respect for is. fucking so people like that. You're soulless, heartless beings. And they sh you shouldn't be respected. You don't deserve any respect. You did nothing to earn respect as a human being. You need to earn respect as a human being by knowing who you are, knowing what your rights are, knowing what right from wrong are, and then extending those to other beings. If you're not doing that, you're just vermin taking up space. And that's what the police are. And I don't give a fuck well, who they are. And if they know that, they quit the cult that they're in. They quit the cult that they're Damn in. right. T tell, tell them about the, what you heard people on the flight on the way over here to Philadelphia talking about. Because it's profound. It shows you how much people even understand that they're actively in a cult and don't care. And that is the, that is the lowest form of disrespect for the self that I could possibly imagine. Bill, it's a powerful story. It's a powerful anecdote because when you told it to me, I'm, I'm going, oh my God, it's, it's hard to believe. And yet, yes, I can understand. This is the, this is the power of the cult that these people are in to hold their mind in this kind of thrall. Tell, tell me what you yourself witnessed on the way over here. Yeah, flying on the, the airplane, the two people behind me were talking and one guy or the lady was like, oh, armed forces. And he's like, yeah, na or Marines. And she's like, Navy. And then they start talking. So they were both in stuff. the armed forces, one in the Marines, one That's in the right. Navy. Okay, continue. And then she says to him, you know, the Navy is really a cult. I think the Navy is really a cult. And then he says to her, the whole military is a cult. Imagine that. And then they started laughing. And then they started laughing. And they're, they're cracking jokes about it, laughing about it, saying to each other that they know that they are in cults that they are in one massive cult and they don't cult. care. They don't no, care. This is who we are up against, folks. This is who you have to understand. This is who the dark occultists, this is who the dark religionists, this is who the dark social engineers made. They made these people. They made their minds. And this is who well, you only. are up against. Not only do they don't care, but they will kill you if ordered to. That's it. That's it. Without a second thought. What, d okay? Just like and it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Right. So not only do they don't care, but they will kill you. And if you don't believe that, you're a stupid motherfucker. If you don't know that that's the case, you're a stupid, dumb, naive, punk, bitch motherfucker. And I'll say it to your face. You're, you're a child. A child, a child. A little fucking fool fucking child, if you don't know that. And I'll say it because no one else will say it just like that. So I'll fucking say it. And you are meek. And you will inherit the earth. And you will. Where I don't want this earth, man. I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm here to progress my soul. 
through the experiences and I'm also here to raise my own consciousness and by others seeing that it is possible hopefully follow suit that's it exactly that's it but who wants this fucking place this place is a fucking trash heap at this point i mean it could be a wonderful beautiful uh, place that can be a a a community for the evolving of consciousness it can become that but we're nowhere near having it be anything like that you know i mean that that would probably take centuries to just get it back to something like that if we even if we began now we're not even beginning we're st- people are still clinging on to the dead fucking corpse that never served who they were, believing that these institutions have any fucking loyalty to them. The police don't have any fucking loyalty to you. They have loyalty to their occult and their paycheck. And if you don't believe it, you're a fucking moron at this point. There's How anybody can order. believe it? That's it. It's a cult. It's an occult cult. It's a covert that's right. cult that's operating outside the purview of most human beings' sight. You know, and and people want to still make excuses for these fucking low life trash. They're low life scumbag trash until they quit. When you quit, you're no longer a low life scumbag piece of fucking trash. Then you become a human being again who's working to try to correct the, the fucking past wrongs that they did. Until you fucking quit, you're a low life scumbag trash fucking cult member. And other people got to call you the fuck on it and stop fucking making excuses for your bullshit cult behavior well there is a glimmer of hope here man they can't find any cops in seattle and i remember dude when somebody asked if when you'll know we're making progress and you said one of the signs that we will know we're making progress is when they where they have a hard time filling these roles of these cops right when police and so, military will no longer join up to those cults, then right. we're starting to turn the tide. Now, there's a positive side to that, which obviously they're not getting people in the cult of the police. But the negative side could be that they're simply trying to take bar, down dude. their SA and instill their new SS. That has to That's be right. watched for. We have to understand the the sophistication of their methods. That doesn't mean to say... Let's take these people out of the equation so we can instill new controllers. It means nobody should be the controller. The idea here is you can't institute people who claim to be the governance of other people because nobody on this earth has the right to control anybody else. The idea, I, one of the founding fathers, I, I believe it was um, uh, James Madison, said, if men were angels government would not be necessary and i corrected Mm. madison while madison was uh you know very wise in other ways and uh you know philosophical in many other ways and had many things right he had that wrong and i call people out on it i'm not just an apologist for you know a group of people who i say oh i i have respect for them so they're always right no they're not always right they're, they're wrong a good bit of the time quite frankly and the point is when they're wrong you got to call them on it And I said, let me offer a correction to that. No human beings are angels, and therefore none are fit to rule anyone else. It's very simple. You know, it's very, very, very uncomplicated. You don't say, we, we, while we're all not angels, we'll institute this level of government by man and we'll all rule over everybody else. I mean, think about mm. the logical fallacy and the logical incoherency in that opinion. You just said nobody's an angel. And then in the next breath, you're saying we have the right to rule. I mean, it's an asinine position. It's an a- and it's an ass position, quite frankly, right? It hasn't been thought through logically. You haven't filtered out the logical inconsistencies in the argument. The trivium's not in place, right? You put the you're, trivium you're in place. You're walking contradiction. That's it. You're walking contradiction, dude. Right. You put the trivium in it. place, and then you understand nobody's fit to rule anybody else because we're all flawed human beings and none of us are perfect we're not angels so therefore you don't put a fucking government in place that is comprised by flawed fucking human beings capable of error you don't do that you say nobody fucking rules anybody else there can't be rulership because everyone is flawed why would i want to rule anybody else when i know i'm just as flawed believe me folks i know a whole lot but that doesn't make me perfect Because I'm far from it, and I'll be the first to admit it. 
That's why I would never want rulership over another being. I, I don't I don't deserve that. I don't want it. You know, that n nobody should put me up on a pedestal like that or anyone else for that matter. This is just simple fucking common sense, or it should be. The problem is we're real short on common sense these days. Well, just to boil it down to people are so evil that they need people that are evil to watch over people that are evil. Like, it just doesn't compute. Like, it just... I think it's a perfectly reasonable uh, <laughs> a solution to put in place, Bill, <laughs> right. don't you? Yeah. Yeah, right. man, I think exactly. it's going to work yeah. out Let's, just fine. Circular yeah. circular logic, man. And guess what, dude? I just got a message from our buddy Android Jones. And so I just wanted to shout out to him. I love Android Jones. And, I, and I've uh, thought of all oh. the people that could possibly do real justice to a tarot deck if I designed one. And I'm going to say that I, I think maybe Android Jones might be the... Uh, human being for the job if he would take it so maybe uh yes. maybe one day we sit down with android and talk over the proposition with him and i have another person that may be willing to actually contribute financially to the project uh whatever would be necessary i would be so you know, um, that's it, man. That's it. I think I should start working on this. I, I've talked about it long enough. Like I think I should start so, getting that ball running because when it comes to esoteric knowledge, the tarot is one of the greatest tools that we have at our disposal to teach us about ourselves. You know, it's not there as an external source of power. It's there as a mirror. The tarot is a mirror. Kabbalah and the tree of life is a mirror. It just helps us to understand who we truly are from a soul perspective. So I know you wanted to talk uh, a lot about that, Bill. Uh, anything you want to bring up in that field regarding any um, esoteric tradition is uh, fine to, to, to explore and flesh out more, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the possibility of, you know, uh, maybe uh, getting together with Android and we talk about coming up with a very unique tarot deck that has never been put out before, uh, talking about what the cards truly, really mean on each card and, uh, you know, helping that be a reflective mechanism and a, a way of, uh, you know, uh, understanding the cards better for people. And I would probably call this the natural law tarot deck is what I would, I would probably, uh, give it the moniker of, uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, having considered many other artists and looked at a lot of their art, I don't think there's anybody better qualified than Android Jones to, 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 to take up that project if he has the time and inclination yeah, to no, want to it, do it. He? Right, right. So. Right, right. But he is a, he is a, a fan of the great work. He, he does the work himself. He has esoteric meanings in his, his work as well. And, and totally, if you, if you should, he should come up on one of these shows as well. Sure. Um, but just look around at some of the people that are in this network, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And we have some freaking mind-blowing, amazing people that are part of this network and part of this community. And we all have something to teach each other. We all have something to learn each from each other. And just like, you know, when, when I first met Mark at the Free Your Mind conference, it was very valuable, man. When we can get together, and there's a lot of energetic information that's exchanged by a physical touch. Yes, Right. And I think that we need to touch each other. I think we need to hug each other. I think we need to come into community, hold space. And also, I like that unity. And then we're going to focus. Focus on where you're at in the spectrum of your knowledge base. Focus on the gap. Right. And in business, we have that bridging the gap exercise of like, look, we're here. We need to be here. How do we bridge that gap? Right. And so that's my goal as community is like, let's start bridging the gaps. Let's start focusing on a knowledge base that we can achieve and a brain trust and it, that we are. It doesn't mean we have to agree on every single solitary thing. It means we have to have common ground when it I comes. I don't want to agree on everything. Of course. I don't want to it agree It would be a boring world, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. We have to but, gain but common there, ground on first principles. On morality, yes. there has to be common ground. You have to have a, a, a genuine understanding of rights and first principles. You know, we don't even have that in our community, though. That's the gap Bill's talking about. We have to bridge that gap. Right. That's what builds real community because real community is connected via the truth. Again, a real relationship. The people involved have to be connected in truth. Otherwise, it's not a genuine connection. 
you know, and this is what Bill is referring to. We need true, genuine community that comes together in first principles and understands those first principles first. Then we right. could discuss how we're going to move forward to implement solutions. And we don't have to agree in every aspect of implementation of those solutions, you know, but we do need we'll to agree unified. on first principles. First principles have That's to right. come first. That's the foundation. Then we can build the structure, right? At the bottom level of a building, right, it's all shared. The foundation is shared. All the weight is bared upon that foundation. The load is bared by that foundation. Then you see spires being built that they go off in different directions. They don't all share the common right. common top ground, right? That's, that's how right. it works. But you got to have the same foundational viewpoint when it comes to first principles. So go ahead, Bill, continue on that. We have to be vulnerable. We have to be in a place that we can say, I was wrong. That's right. That's right. That's one of the most powerful words that we can say as individuals, and we're going to flush out the stuff that we're wrong about. And we do it in a space that we can be safe and be vulnerable with each other and know that we all have the common outcome of eventually focusing our, our mind and, 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 our, and our efforts on knowing the truth and so that we may speak it and then we take action together. And so that unity focus action from that um, that uh, free what is it the uh, freedom with natural law is that, is that what it is? freedom under, under natural, natural law, law. Com. yes right I love that tagline man it's unity focus action but until we have that unity and focus I think that it goes in that order just like the grammar logic the trivia rhetoric it's the same as everything that's else right. that's right and you can't you can't go rhetoric grammar logic can't take them out of what order. The what the hell right. is that? You know, it's like it's it's your your. So you're you're, you're unifying man. under the knowledge, and then the focus is how to proceed. You have a clear understanding. It's the trivium. It's exactly the trivium. Right. Then you act. You know, that's your rhetoric stage unity, or your wisdom. Unity, grammar, unity, that's right. grammar, bringing it all together. Unified, of course, right? Focus, yep. focus, logic. I'm going to focus until it. we and understand. That I, that right. We have two two contradictions here. One of them needs to go bye bye. That's right. Right. Then we have the truth. See, and then once we have the truth, then we understand it, and then ready. Now action. we act. It, it, it's now exactly act. how. That's the exact order it needs to be in. That's the trivium. Bill, you know what it is? The the the, the bad dialectic, right? Uh, the the polarizing dialectic of left versus right. They separated people into two camps, each of which has at least half of the equation wrong. OK, yeah. you, you have the leftists with authoritarian approach, completely incorrect with a, 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 a nanny state uh, with, a, you know, don't give and responsibility, all of that, uh, the whole woke gender dynamic. Confusion. Right. And, but they got some things right. They want to take yeah. care of the environment. They want to have general community. They want to have they don't they don't really like the police, although many of them want to have the police transformed to be on their side but many of them don't trust or like the police or want them the uh, the the right hand side has many things correct gun ownership individual rights you know uh g g they believe the government has totally overreached in people's lives so they're more minarchists and they have that right but then many of them are authoritarian in different ways where they want localized control where they want a lot of police on the street you know uh where they're 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 not compassionate enough you know where they're they're very uh selfish and you know focused too much on money you know it's both sides have a lot wrong both sides have some and if not a lot right Right. But that means neither side is the direction you should go because you're going into a minimum of a 50 50 dynamic when it comes to getting things correct. And if you don't have things correct when it comes to the trivium, when you don't have things correct when it comes to first principles, when you don't have things correct when it comes to morality, regardless of what political persuasion you are coming from, you're action is going to be imbalanced it's going to be imbalanced toward the immoral you're not going to ha be uh, be acting according to your actual rights under natural law this is the problem with getting any part of it wrong that's why it is said that the path the middle way is narrow it's a narrow pathway right 
when you when you're going out to the left and right, you have all kinds of error that you you could be walking all on, and it, it's it, you you have all that ground to step on that is all unfortunately incorrect, right? You're on an, an a non firm foundation, but. When you're on the path of truth, it's very narrow. It's narrow straights. A little bit wandering this way, you're off the path. A little bit wandering that way, you're off the path. You got to step on that razor's edge, you know? And if you, if you stay on that razor's edge, that middle pathway, straight to the truth, then you're going to be making progress. And then the left's going to be calling you a fascist right-wing lunatic and the right's going to be calling you a communist left-wing lunatic and both of them are wrong conspiracy theorist. <laughs> both of them are wrong yeah then the conspiracy theory yeah uh-huh as if i'm theorizing right they're just in the dialectic they don't understand a person who's walking that middle ground and i don't mean a centrist either i'm talking about somebody who is really in alignment with truth and is an imbalance toward either the left brain or the right brain and this is what these people don't understand. They still are only seeing it from their level of consciousness and their perspective. That's why they can't understand somebody at a higher level of consciousness. They have to do the work to pull themselves up from the bootstraps to that higher level of consciousness through knowledge. Knowledge is how it has to proceed. The, the gaps in these people's knowledge is what makes them stay in a dialectic. It's what makes them stay polarized and separated and never the twain shall meet and why they're so totally adamant against each other and, and can't see any part of the, other, uh, the other's arguments, even when they're they have corridors. certain things correct. Right. They're in corridors. That's right. Dude. They're in corridors because they're in a political affiliation. That's right. And so as long as they're in the corridor, you're still trapped, dude. They're identified. You know they they they've been they're given a, a, a set of identities by the social engineers who they never met, who they don't understand that whole class of people that is trying to divide and conquer them, and they've accepted those identities firmly into themselves, and they've calcified in their mental, emotional, and spiritual makeup, and they can't see their way out of that. And the way out of that is first principles: know the self. Get, in, get the information that you lack, that you still don't have, and you don't know enough. You think you know enough, and you don't know enough. You still have large gaps in your informational makeup, and you need to gather that knowledge eclectically and put it together. And that's what this whole podcast, since its inception, is trying to help people to do. Understand, your worldview is fucked up. Your, your, your whole knowledge base is completely incomplete. It is so incomplete that anybody looking at it sees that it looks like Swiss cheese. It looks like craters on the fucking moon. There's so many fucking holes in it. Okay. And, and it, there's no nice way of saying that to people. You know, this is why, where we could talk about communication and building community where you have to somehow bridge in a communications way, explaining to people you, you are deficient and it's not somebody immediately beating down on you. Like, I'm not trying to beat down on you because you're ignorant, because you're deficient in knowledge. I'm trying to wake you up. We're trying, trying to, wake, to you up. wake you up and build you up. Build That's you right. up to give you help to give you and point you to that information and say you didn't look at this and that's a problem you need to look at this or you're not going to understand the totality of this dynamic and this is what i i struggle to do because i honestly i'm going to just be honest with people i look at people with fucking contempt I look at them and I'm like, you're just a lazy fucking asshole who doesn't want to do the fucking work. You're just a lazy, egotistical fucking prick that just wants to be fucking right. Guess what? I wanted to be right too when I was in Satanism and people came along and said, hey, you stupid fucking little fucking boy, you don't know what's going fucking on. You may think you do from your bullshit perspective, from your bullshit level of consciousness, but you don't know what the fuck you're involved in. You're in a fucking cult, you dumb motherfucker. You need to get the fuck out of it. You need to get your head screwed on fucking straight and you need to learn to fucking what, learn what the fuck is going on in this world because you're involved with the people that are flushing it down the fucking toilet bowl. 
And I had to fucking, I beat myself up over that. That I let myself in my ignorance and in my fucking emotional fucking trauma get sucked into a fucking cult like that. But guess what? At least I had enough self-respect to pull myself the fuck out of it. I didn't keep doubling and tripling and quadrupling down in my fucking ignorance. I at least pulled back, looked at what I was involved in and said, hey, you know what? They're right. The fucking problem is me. I don't know what I think I fucking know. And there is a time right. when you can step back and you can say, whoa, I do know now. You know, it's not, it, it's not like you ever stop learning. But there's a point where you say, hey, I know what's going on now to the extent that I can talk about these dynamics in their completeness and help to enact a solution through that knowledge. Yes, it, it's not like you, you are forever ignorant. This is another thing in the whole new age and religious communities that needs to fucking go. No, there is a place where you've arrived, where you've reached the fucking plateau of knowledge that you need to be at to solve this problem. Hey, will there not be another step and you got to go up here? Yeah, at some point, yes, there will. But guess what? We can't keep fucking second guessing ourselves forever and saying, I only know that I know nothing. That's some bullshit new age nonsense. I know quite a fucking bit. Other people know quite a fucking bit and other people are totally fucking re- ignorant and way down here and they got to get up to here where we're at if we're going to make any fucking progress and if we're going to create a community that makes any progress and understand that that passion is is translated by love that we have and and, and the, not just I mean, Mark is in contempt of others, but uh, but also I know that... I, I struggle with that. I, I know that it's a problem, and I know I need to work on it, but I'm just letting people know I'm being honest. I don't lie to myself no. about myself. I just say what's true, and I struggle with that. That's a problem for me. That's why we need more people who can extend even more compassion to these people to help them fucking learn, because at some point, I just like want to smash them their fucking head in and say, you're just a fucking dunce. You don't want to fucking learn. You want everybody fucking insane. I I don't have an unlimited amount of patience and I acknowledge that right? I'm, I'm telling you I'm not perfect. I'm telling you I have a limit to my fucking patience. I don't have that a, a, a endless amount of time to talk to fucking fucking imbeciles, right? Other people have to pick up the fucking gap where it exists and help do that work. One person can't do that. And I certainly no. can't be the one person to do it. I, I'm, I'm just telling people out in the open, honestly, to be honest about myself, this is where my failings are at. I don't have an unlimited amount of patience for people. I don't have an unlimited amount of compassion for people. I have a little bit of patience. I have a little bit of compassion, but it ends somewhere, right? I try to help them. If they don't want fucking help, that ends somewhere. We need more people constantly barraging them. See, that's how it's got to get done. Just the way the fucking media barrages us. We have to constantly barrage people with truth to the point where the truth's voice is infinitely louder than the voice of the lie. And we're nowhere near that stage yet. Not even close. No. But we're tiptoeing to it, man. Well, I, fuck, I don't even know if that's even true. I think it is. is I, I think that's fair it. to say that we're moving toward it very slowly. Well, and dude, remember when you said, I'm not interested in describing the prison right right i want to know how the fuck we break out of this right and that's it man is like these corridors of perception are basically prisons in my opinion and and it confines the way that people view this world and and um and that's why we need community that's why each one of us has different ways of presenting this information as long as it is is it's it is true Right, um, like the different cadence of our voice, the different tone, tonation, and there's 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 people that are going to appeal to you. You know, I don't have a problem with Mark. I know him, and I know that he is intense. But I also know the body of work that he has done, and the banging, trying to freaking get some type of freaking crowbar into the collective consciousness of the society on Earth. And and that that's what agape love is. You know, th- right. this is what the higher form of love actually is, which I know that you wanted to really discuss the kinds of love and the difference. We need between to, them. we need to get down to like, there is no, like, I, I believe that most people think that Eros, which is lust, <laughs> which is passion, which is great. 
romantic I mean, love, to an extent, love between yes. man and woman, or, or you know, uh, partners yes. in life, life partners, etc. Nothing wrong with that. It's one of the greatest things in life. I mean, there's there's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, no, there should be no shame in that. That should be expressed. That should be celebrated, right? Absolutely. And we're, of course. And for not that. only that, but that's why we come into a body, right? And so that we can experience this, so we can eat, we can experience these different, even orgasmic pleasures sure. and stuff. But there's a reason why in the Vedic chakra system, why that, that root chakra is the center of want and desire. And I think that that's what happens is that transmutation where there are different levels of love, right? The seven types of love. So, so you were talking about the ag agape, which is the um, what, what, the earthly love, the communal love. The, the What would you describe it I, as? I talk about it as the love of truth, the love of freedom, the love of what is right. Uh, agape is cosmic love. It is the love for simply what is right what is just what is true and the love of mm. freedom for all you know um it's respect for others as sovereign beings ultimately there's an in-between universal there's an in-between love that is philos philos is brotherly love Familiar. sisterly love that is platonic love love for for everyone in the physical right that's above and Eros Philadelphia love. was named named after correct philos, right? De Delphos the... means brother in Greek and philos means love the philos form of love which is bro brotherly love or platonic love the love of brother okay and that's the in-between form that's in between Eros and agape agape is the highest form of cosmic love the love of what is true the love of what is right the love of what is just and the love of freedom, uh, the, the, the desire for all beings to be free and free from suffering. That's what I would describe mm -hmm. agape love as. Wouldn't that be fucking wonderful, man? Oh, that's, that's, what, that's the day. consciousness we have to get to. That's the consciousness we have to get to. And as long as people are shielding parents away from doing something about their children being murdered we're not going to reach the agape form of love i mean imagine how so, mind controlled the being has to be imagine what a golem you know imagine how unloved they had I to be in their dude, life so, picture how unloved so, it, it, from a perspective of even eros and philos forms of love they had to be to turn out like that how much of a failure our society is as much of a failure in producing c cops like that as human beings as they are in producing a mass shooter that would go and shoot up school children. Again, regardless well, of what you think the event is all about, we are still producing people with that level of fucking complete lack of understanding of who they are and complete total imbalance in their behavior. And then well, the we have people protecting them and hope it, standing down for a paycheck so they do maximum damage. How fucked up in the head and in the heart, in the soul, do people have to be to behave like that? That's why we have to understand that just uh, caring about your child doesn't involve forcing a fucking meal down their throat and sending them off to fucking school where they're going to be mm. further brainwashed. It means really oh, caring about their emotional makeup. It means really paying attention to them. It means really caring about their spiritual development. It means loving them from an agape form, higher form of love and consciousness. And how many parents are even taking that approach? How many parents give a shit about what's right? How many parents even know what a right is? How many parents care about whether their children are going to live in a dystopian police state? They don't even care about their children, you know? They don't care well, about their children a from glimmer. a philos perspective, you know, let alone an agape perspective. And this is what we have to conquer. We have to realize we need to employ love in our society from a much higher perspective. And it's great to have Eros love. It's great to have philos love. Wonderful to have romantic, a romantic partner. Wonderful to have family and friends. But we have to have them in our life to the extent that we do or even don't. And then transcend to the agape form of love and consciousness, which is we have to seek justice. We have to seek truth. We have to seek true freedom, not this imaginary form of freedom that we have.
Mm. So, Bill, I think it's very powerful that you, you wanted to bring that up on the show because I think it's still very much misunderstood. I tried to clear it up during my breakdown of uh, Thelema when I broke down the Thelemic tradition. But uh, I think it's very important that people understand those different forms of, of love and delineate between them and seek uh, the agape form of love in their lives. Well, and know that these military structures, they give the familial love that they've always lacked. That's right. Right. And that's, that's the magnet. As a proxy. For these people to join. Yeah, they give that as and a proxy. And what do they say? They're... It's my family. It's yeah. my brothers. It's my you know, and then they'll use it. What's the difference between the store? How do you how do you uh, store J, store gay? What uh, th isn't that a familiar a type of familiar love as well? The I'm not the, familiar. I would um, have to look it up. Uh, sorry, folks. I accidentally gay, hit my natural corner. form of affectionate experience between family members. So that would be a protective kinship based love between parents and their children. Children from the parents. Store gay can also be described as a sense of patriotism <laughs> interesting hmm. uh allegiance to the same team so an associative type of store gay would be that love of of i associate maybe or um the family member so it, it's like a different level of that that um that phylos right right and then we have the mania too, more, more which of is the protective the protective fatherly aspect of it perhaps yes instead of the rudimentary um yeah, of of uh, of just the the relationship, I guess. Right, the familiar. Um, and then we have the mania, mania, which is a, a type of love that I think that is uh, indicative of an imbalance. Right, right. Um, and um, and I think like I love this that, thing in the 3D so much that I'm obsessed with it. You know, and there's plenty of people yes. with that. Look at look at the whole sports cult dynamic. You know, of grown men acting like children, painting their oh. face. You know, and wearing a uni wearing a costume and going to a sporting event, and their whole self worth being hinged upon whether their tribal team wins or loses. I mean, talk about mind control. Talk about social engineering. You know, when when they first proposed, when social engineers f first proposed building sports stadiums, I don't know if anybody knows about this. There were arguments among literal like social engineering like planning groups saying you'll never get adults to go watch children's games as a competition and fill stadiums with them this will be a colossal waste of money and resources that we could put toward other ways of controlling people and they said oh yeah you want to bet watch watch us do it and you know they actually turned you know children's games into these spectacle sports and got people to just totally invest their entire identity in them. I, I mean, I can't even imagine. Look, folks, I, I like a distraction from time to time. Nobody's going to tell you, devoid yourself of every single little pleasure. You'd be a fool to do so because you'd become imbalanced. You know, I like little distractions. I watch uh, a movie here and there. I, I watch pro wrestling. I told you that's my, my uh, stupid yeah. little uh, <laughs> guilty pleasure, right? from my youth okay it's, it's fun. but guess what my work is done for the day when i do those things that I'm, I'm not doing them while i need to be working right while i'm doing the great work my energy and my whole attention is focused directly upon it i'm not dicking around watching movies or, or playing video games you know then when i am finished what i need to accomplish for the day and i have a sense of accomplishment and i say okay i've bitten off that chunk for the day another one tomorrow and then i'm resting at night to re re recoup and rejuvenate myself and my body and my mind i'll let my mind wander a little bit sometimes i won't sometimes i'll go into more research sometimes i'll go watch more documentaries or or listen to more lectures or podcasts but Sometimes I'll just say, hey, I'm going to watch an old episode of Star Trek The Next Generation tonight, you know, or I'm going to put a movie yeah. on. I'll throw, you know, a Harry Potter film on or something. I'll watch an allegorical film or something to just uh, wind down and relax. Nobody should be without that, something like that because you will go insane if you only 100% dedicate your focus to one thing. You got to have some levels of enjoyment and downtime, right? And and something that is uh, light, and that you don't constantly put your mind in one one perpetual circle. We're not talking about that, mm -hmm. but we're 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 talking about you know 
just um, focusing most of your time on the work and then unwinding it a, a little bit and, and having pleasures in your life for that. So again, this, this goes back to what are you going to spend most of your time doing, right? First of all, that is the basis of community, right? Community is like, what is the essence of the, all of the people that form this dynamic? You could call it a group, but we're calling it simply a community. Are they really spending their time to enact the solution that everybody really wants? That's the great work. That's moral education. If I look at any group that I'm involved in, I'm, the, I'm one of the only, one of, if not the only moral educator present that explains rights, that explains what freedom really is, that explains what transgressions against rights are, that explains the difference between right and wrong and natural law. I, 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 I could ask every single person at the entire group or meetup, are you doing any aspect of this work? No, I do this type of activism. No, I'm involved in survivalism. No, I'm a gun rights guy. No, I, I go to the, the shooting range and practice my shooting craft. No, I'm, I'm out growing because I'm expecting the food apocalypse and I just all, all we want to focus on farming. You know, it's like all of our eggs are in the basket to lose. And I'm not saying don't practice those crafts. Practice those crafts. But if your craft isn't in the great work, if your craft isn't in moral education, you are playing the game to lose. And this is what I see almost everyone doing. I, I, I consider I'm one of the only per persons in any, one of the only people in any of the dynamic groups that I'm involved with all over. And I'm not going to mention any names and single anybody else out, single anyone out, or try to embarrass anybody. I'm just saying... Every single person is playing some aspect of the game to lose instead of truly morally educate. If we're not truly mm. morally educating, we're playing to lose. And I'm going to keep well, bringing up this dynamic. Yes, go ahead, Bill. What's in direct proportion to freedom? Morality. Wouldn't it make sense that that, that would be a cornerstone of what we talk it's about? got to be the only solution then. If you don't have a moral population, you can't have freedom. That's a law. It's not a suggestion. It's not a theory. It's a law in nature. And if you do not have a moral population, you cannot have freedom. Have freedom. Period. Period. So, uh, is gardening the answer? No. Gardening is something we should have as a skill. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Are are just guns the answer? No. But we should have them for our protection. Is sound money the answer? No. But we should have it for interacting while we still believe in money. Right. Means of exchange. I'm not going to argue any of those points. But if you want real freedom, real freedom isn't hinged on just guns. Real freedom isn't hinged on gardening. Real freedom isn't hinged on just growing your own food. Real freedom isn't hinged on survivalist skills or sound money. Real freedom is hinged on morality. And if you're not involved in the game to teach humanity morality, you're playing to lose. Hmm. And when I ask that question, do you see how quickly and easily Mark answered? It should be like That's it should be I like think. knowing the answer to one plus one. You know? That's right. Well, and I want to step back to where you were talking about the, um, you know, taking time for yourself. And uh, Falautia, I believe, Falautia, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that is another type of love. And that is self yourself. Right. Damn right. Yep. And, and care for yourself and love yourself and that, you know, and be easy with yourself. And even when we have all this stress and, and self-talk, negative self-talk, whenever I work with people and I work with dogs and people and I'm talking to them and, and a lot of times with the relationship, they, they, they go different ways and sometimes they go a little bit off to the ditch and the people are trying to write the relationship or trying to get along with this animal. And the animal is a wonderful thing because it, it's a great reminder of the law of nature, the natural law. And, um, you know, they're not going to read our yield signs or like follow the man-made law. Basically they're, they're walking in nature and, um, and they're in the present moment. We, they, they live their lives in the, in the present, present moment right. and they forgive and they're they're And one of the things I was telling Mark before we started, it was like, uh, go look at the experiments that they've done where they have given people oxytocin. Uh, which is known as the love chemical. And the number one thing that they saw 
um, a side effect from even the smallest doses of this oxytocin was the subjects one to forgive and not feel, um, you know, the down, uh, the stressful effects of holding on to grudges or whatever. And, and that's where I think, I think there's something valuable in there, you know? And I think that with this love and the understanding that the foundation has to have love baked in, man. Of course. That the foundation and the love, the love of, of life and the love of, I mean, just look at the great work, man. Truth, love, freedom. Yep. It's one of the three it's words right in one between. Of the that we use. That's and that's the right meat of the sandwich. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. <laughs> that's got to be it's got to be the ultimate foundation. You know, it's got well, like love under will. When I was talking about thalamic principles, love is the law, man. It's, it's the, love law. Is the law. It's the foundation of everything. Agape right. love, absolutely. You know, the other forms mm -hmm. of love are all important and have to be enacted in the world, but. People have to understand agape above all else. You know, that's where that's where the transformative form of love is at and has to be employed if we're going to really uh, transform the world into a, a just place that is, uh, you know, going to uh, allow us to truly be free and truly express ourselves and, and uh, become who we were meant to be. What I was saying, too, is uh, when I'm watching these people handle their dogs or, or whatever, they're learning the relationship with this animal, mm -hmm. and they're like, I'm so stupid, or I'm an idiot, and I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. So, uh, so I want to stop that right here. I want to I ask you a question. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to know the right questions. Right. We need to ask the right questions as a community, and that by itself. I think that if we ask the right questions, just like I asked Mark, what is freedom in direct proportion to? <laughs> yeah. Right. And the, the, the right Morality. answers, if we know yeah. the questions to ask, will come. They will come organically. You know, if we mm -hmm. do ask those right questions, that, that's like the Socratic method of really getting down to the heart of what's important, you know, by asking yourself questions. It's self-examination without a doubt. Yeah. That's part of shadow work. Big part of it. Yeah. But to go back to this dynamic with animals, you know, we talked about, you know, you were talking about like people like uh, immediately beat themselves up just because they're lacking knowledge right. about how to interact with them. And, uh, right. you know, that's not the right thing to do. Like, it's the same thing when I, when I teach technology. I see people doing that. Oh, I'm stupid when it comes to technology. No, you're not stupid when it comes to technology. You're simply ill-informed currently. You haven't gotten the right information. You haven't asked the right questions and then answered answered them. It's it's a matter of simply lacking information. It's not that you're stupid. It's that you are currently ignorant of the information that you need to know to operate that thing properly. And this is the same thing when it comes to the dynamic of human freedom on the earth. We just are ignorant about how it works as a species. Once we become knowledgeable about how it works, we don't need to beat ourselves over up over it. We just need to take that knowledge and employ it. And then organically, we will be doing the right things and the right results will show up in our lives. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult to even figure out that it works that way. You know, but without self-respect, we just beat ourselves up and tell ourselves we're stupid and there's nothing we can do about it. No, totally wrong approach to it. It's not a matter of that, you know, and w w we surprise ourselves with just a little bit of trying how much we will achieve and how much we'll expand our knowledge base. Uh, effort is all that's required. You know, if you want to, if anybody wants to beat themselves over anything, beat yourselves over up on giving up on yourselves thinking that you can't do it and waiting so long and, and just uh, staying in that state of stagnation and don't beat yourself up too bad over that. Just say, I just have to activate and just try this. You don't even need, you just need to fucking try to do it. You don't need to succeed. Yeah. Failure will be a teacher and you just keep pushing and keep going a little bit each day. You don't have to do it all at once either. I am not expecting, I tell people in the How to Become the True Media Seminar, do you think I expect you to become the level of technical logical expert that I am after one year of taking one course I would never expect that nope. I expect you to years. beginning <laughs> beginning to gain basic competence on in your craft in in creating new media basic competence will go from there right 
You build on basic competence, but if you don't have that foundation at the bottom level of basic competence, what do you think you're going to build? You're not going to build anything. If the foundation isn't laid of basic competence, you ain't building the 33rd floor or the 93rd floor, okay? You're building an unsound structure because you're not trying. You try, you get the basics, you build your foundation. Then you slowly build on top of there, and then you start doing more and more impressive things. No builder in the history of humanity ever tried to build the top floor before the foundation. The foundation is where you have to learn and get the very basics at. Okay, that's why it's called foundational. You know, it's not expert level. It's foundational. That's what we're teaching and how to become the true media. That's why anybody that wants to beat themselves up and say, oh, I'm dumb. I just don't know technology. No, you just haven't been exposed to the right way of doing it. And you haven't just tried at a foundational level. And, and I'm telling you, I will approach it from that level, from the beginner and then eventually intermediate stage later in the course. But we will build those foundational skill sets. And some people, I tell you what, let me just... If I may elaborate this, I know I'm cutting into calls. We should go to the phones. But people, some people tell me, I'm so glad you went as slow as you did, Mark, because I understood all of it, everything that you said. And then some people email me and say, you were going so slow, I fell asleep in class this week. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, so be it. Well, then guess what? You know, if that's what you know, guess what? Don't still think you know everything that I talk about because I will surprise people who do know those basics and uh, they'll say to me, you taught me things I still didn't know, even though I knew the basics of what you were saying. You showed me tricks. You showed me short shortcuts. You showed me pointers that I never even would have considered and it totally enhanced my workflow. It totally enhanced my understanding and now I'm more efficient at what I do. So even people who consider themselves experts don't think that you know everything. Don't think that you've heard it all or seen it all and guess what students teach me things while I'm in the class I haven't seen it all I don't know it all people will go oh check that menu out look at this command you could do in that menu and I'll be like well damn I never knew that was there and that's going to really make my workflow more efficient and productive and it's like you know I don't expect that I know everything I will look things up you know, I will make mistakes and then learn from the mistake. That's how you learn anything, folks. You don't beat yourself up over it. So, Bill, that's a powerful um, aspect to really help people to understand. Never beat yourself up because you just don't understand something, you know? No. Well, and if you allowed somebody else to speak to you the way that you just spoke to yourself, oh, and that person was a friend, would you still be friends with that person? Right. And a lot of times people say, absolutely not. And I'm like, sure. you mean you wouldn't allow somebody to say, you're a fucking idiot. What are you so stupid? Like, no, you won't fucking take that. So why the hell will you take it from yourself? Sure. And so I want to encourage every single person that's listening to here, stop the negative self-talk. And this is going to be a point that we do need to be vulnerable. And that's the beauty of having a community that we can be vulnerable with. Because guess what? You know, at Malkuth, we're at the foundation. We're at the start. We're at the root of the tree. And we have a choice of where we want to go. That's right. And, Stay uh, there and, as, and enter cosmic judgment or build our way up to the very top of that ladder. Uh, enter the, ladder the state of God. the ladder to God and enter the state of self mastery. And then we'll have cosmic justice. Very mm. simple choice. It's it's not hard to figure out. Uh, it's a choice in the moment. That's living in the present right. moment and having true present moment awareness and entering the agape form of love consciousness. If we do that, we'll enter that state of cosmic justice. If we don't evolve in that progression, we're going to stay in cosmic judgment. So, Bill, um, yeah. before we go to the calls, let's uh, just tell people where they can find your work and uh, give them any websites that you want to give out, and then we'll go to some callers. Well, I'm on the Great Word Network. That's where I'm sending everybody. So I, even though I do have the Free Your Mind podcast mm -hmm. dot com, but just go to the Great Work Network. All my content's on there. And uh, it's been a while since I have created any content for the truth community, but I'm, I'm even today, I mean, I'm, I'm starting again. I had a, a year-long uh, process that my wife had cancer, 
plan now where she's healed up and we're doing good and I'm back to work, man. Such and good so, news. Uh, thank, thank God. Such good uh, news. So glad uh, to hear that because that was you were there when that, a very scary situation. Man. Yes, yes. Yeah. So and I'm thankful for you that I can call and talk and and uh, Mark is my friend, man. Like we, I call him, I talk to him, text to him, and, and anytime I come out here, I mean. But you also have to realize that Mark is. I'm just profoundly grateful for you, dude, because not only did you teach me and fill in the gaps of the knowledge that I needed, but you also inspired me to start my own project. And, and you've done dude, some awesome stuff, Bill. Uh, such oh, great oh. contributions to the work. If people have not checked out the Free Your Mind podcast, it's absolutely critical listening. Uh, Bill's uh, done some great work with it, interviewed some great guests. Um, you know, I have them all downloaded. Uh, so, you know, uh, check that out on the One Great Work Network. You can click into the creators section and then click on Bill Church's avatar and uh, you'll t you'll be taken to his blog on the One Great Work Network where all that material is there uh, and more yes. will be coming. So, Bill, thank you well, so much. So, yes. You bet. And just so you know, everybody that's out there that hasn't produced any content, I encourage you, do it today. And know that when I listen to the first episodes of my Free Your Mind <laughs> podcast, I'm embarrassed as shit, you know? And so if you're not embarrassed by the first content that you put out, then you've right. waited way too long. And you got to okay? say, so what? That's what it is. That's so what it was. Put right? it out there. Yes, I listened to my first and podcast and I'm like, well, I was a little bit shaky. I'm still not embarrassed by it, but uh, we make progress. <laughs> we make progress and we keep going. And it's like, was I the person then that I am today? No, of course, I've learned and grown much since then. And I've learned a lot technologically about how to do things, how not to do things. Uh, and, you know, we always have room for improvement. We, we're never perfect. Uh, we can strive for that, but no, in 3D, you're never going to reach perfection. Don't let that inhibit you. Don't let perfection become the enemy of doing something that is good and that is right. powerful and transformative. Uh, you know, don't wait for perfection. Just start it. Start it and improve upon it as you go. That's all any of us can do. All right. So well, no, great advice there, Bill. No yes. There's no finish line here. That's right. Either. That's right. And we're just striving and we're just, we're, we're walking this. I mean, we're, we're, we're living life. And, and I think this is the goal of life is to, to not only create, but to seek, know, and speak. And improve as we go. Absolutely. Look, when we, even if we solve the conundrum of human freedom and end human slavery, you think those are the only challenges out there? You think that's all that we need to do as human beings? There'll be a, a billion other challenges over the horizon. And then we'll that's meet right. them. To the next level. If, and then the next level after that's that. That's right. Next level after that. And if we survive this one as a species, uh, let's qualify it because there's no guaranteed victory either. It's a, it's a choice in the moment whether we'll go on to those next levels or not. And we have to utilize our will to proceed and to continue to, to grow and to evolve. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Church, check him out on the One Great Work Network. Let's uh, get ready to go over to your calls right now. So give me a moment to uh, set my screen up for the callers. And then we want to hear from you. Any questions that you have from Bill Church or comments on what we just discussed. So give me one moment and we'll bring Bill right back in with our callers. Let me just get the screen set up here for that. All right, what I'm going to do is just get rid of my, uh, make this full screen. Let's see how it works if I simply make it full screen and keep it there. I really would rather not have people, uh, people's names showing. If it is, I'll move it over, but let's just give it a shot like this. I think that works fine. We could see the edge of the Discord window, but you're still full screen. I'm going to leave it like that, and uh, let's start going to some callers let's hear from angela angela you are live on what on earth is happening with my special guest bill church welcome hello mark can you hear me all right yes we can you're coming through loud and clear fantastic um what a powerful thing you all were both talking about i have yet to um uh, check out um uh, Bill's uh, content on the One Great 
work a network and um but i've been listening to several and chris jensen is one of my favorites right now oh he's great uh, he's he's a uh, very down to earth i really sure. like him anyway i just wanted to say that um one of the things that bill spoke about that is really difficult for people because of the media and the competition they put out there for the most trivial of things in life is mm. that negative self-reinforcement. Um, and it's almost as if we're beaten with it, uh, you know, since public school, you know, even in kindergarten, you know, kindergarten is probably fun because you're learning things. But then when you get to first grade, it's all rote, you know, it's just like memorize this and memorize this. It doesn't matter if it's real or not or or if it's true or not. And then all of a sudden you have, uh, you know, a graduating class of paychecks. Right. Uh, nobody's a leader. Nobody um, does any digging unless, you know, they have contacts and things like that. And a lot of people are starting. Um, I'm getting ready to take your class. and I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. Um, and w yeah. And um, I'm coming in late in life. You know, I'm 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, the last few years. Um, I have put myself out there. I don't have, I have content out there. I even created an assembly and we're still together, awesome. but uh, since I've been doing my deeper dive and you've come on, uh, into my radar, I have done nothing but push you and, uh, your content toward, uh, these people and going into the more esoteric stuff, such as the Kabbalion, um, and, 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 Understanding that the knowledge of all of these so-called occulted um, philosophies are just that. It depends on how what you do with the information and how you use it. That's right. And and it's wonderful because all of my assembly are doing their deep dives, and I really think that uh, we're going to be able to form a community here in my state um, that can you know be an annex of your one great work network and i'm i'm just so looking forward to it and i wanted to say thank you so much for having me and i, I, I yield <laughs> absolutely i'm really glad that you're going to be part of the thank how you. to become the true media seminar and that you're uh you've been looking into all of this esoteric knowledge and the one great work network in general definitely check out bill's work i think you're going to find it uh tremendous uh and um bill your your take on uh everything that angela just put forward there angela thank you so much for the well, call Applying the knowledge that we gain in what we were talking about earlier versus the lower S self versus the higher S self and what we um, utilize this knowledge for. And, it, and it's basically to, to set set free humanity. But we can use this knowledge to gain an advantage over others as well. Right. And so, um, you know, that's it. Is it that, that just knowing that it's it's the knowledge base that is for the greater good. That's right. right. And, and that it, even though we're, we're working on ourselves, it's the macro. That's the reason why we're doing the micro. That's right. Does that make sense? Makes sense because to the me. More the, yeah. I mean, and, and, and how would you like, how, how does it make sense to you? Um, to me, it's like pixels, you know, if, it's like when we got one little pixel versus this millions and millions of right. pixels on the screen. Right. Every, every aspect of a totality if it is improved, increases the improvement of the whole. That's right. And it can't be any other way if you think about it. Okay, if you, if you increase the aspect of a molecule of water in a container, the container's whole quality is increased. It's the same thing when it comes to people. We're, we're cells in a body. If, if some of the cells become healthier, the whole body becomes healthier to, to that extent, to that ratio, right? That therefore we have to encourage making a lot more of the cells of the body healthier so that the totality of the body becomes healthy. Um, that dynamic is something that a lot of people can't understand. That's where you get the what can I do mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the caller Angela here hit on something that when it's never too late to become involved to reverse the process, right? It doesn't matter what your age is. Uh, we have people who are 70 years or older in the How to Become the True Media Seminar, and they could contribute and do the great work at any given time that they choose to activate. You know, it's, it's a choice in the moment. 
It's a choice to self-improve. It's a choice to get involved and get on the battlefield. Every single atom, every cell contributes to that dynamic in the whole. It, in, it improves the ratio. It is, uh, it is a overarching uh, dynamic of looking at whole wider systems. It, 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 it's understanding how systems level dynamics work. And this is what the social engineers know. That's how they know mm. how to keep things in control, how to keep the lid on things. They know that if it's pushed past this little bit, it will be a quantum reaction. It will be a chain reaction circumstance, right? Where everybody's starting to think different and then behave different. And they understand those systems level dynamics. That's why they employ people like actuaries. We were just talking about companies that employ I was just gonna yeah, say actuarial that. <laughs> studies. You know, so go ahead, Bill, to explain that because I've talked about it in the past, but you, you, you know a lot about it too. Well, I mean, it's just the, the actuaries, I mean, it's a way to get in front of a problem. It basically, that's it. It's like, where is this going to go? And it's basically a way to predict the future. But it's a very good way to predict the future. They take and, and like infinite that, amount of variables, like tens of thousands of variables, and put them into supercomputers, right? Metadata, and, right. And, and then they have algorithms programmed into these massive supercomputers that can model what will actually occur in a future point in a scenario. This is called actuarial, okay? An actuarial yes. study. Actuaries are paid off in in ridiculous amounts of money, often millions of dollars per year to do their jobs because uh, they are some of the most um, valuable people to companies who are trying to predict very complex dynamic systems and where they will go at future points. That's how they can, uh, you know, hedge bets and make appropriate arrangements and set certain advertising into effect and many, many other dynamics that, that corporations have to deal with on a yearly basis. And uh, this is what I talk about is that the, the global engineers, the, so, the globalist social engineers run actuarial studies on human dynamics, you know, so Absolutely. they look at, oh, what will happen if this many people get involved in this type of a thing? in this type of a project or this many people wake up. That's why they have to keep putting the pressure on making new events, scare people, uh, having new false flags, etc. They know that without doing that, if they just let things run as it is without interjecting some new variable, they're going to lose. They've actuaried this out and they actuary out how to keep people in check, how to keep people down, how to keep them in low vibratory fear-based consciousness, you know? So, um, Regarding what, what Angela was saying, um, I think we have to understand every contribution to the solution improves the situation. Every person staying stagnant helps the dynamic continue to go the, the, the route that it is on. And this is what people, many people don't understand. I hear the defeatist mindset of, oh, but what can we do? You can do a lot. All you got to do when you're asking yourself, what can we do is what has someone like myself done? Pract not, not entirely myself, practically myself, but with some help, right? You can yeah. do a tremendous amount. You, you have to just have the confidence in yourself that you can do more. It is very possible to do more, you know, and it's just, you gotta, you gotta try. Go ahead, Bill. What's that saying of um, don't discount? Oh, geez, the 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 few that change the world. Here, let me see if I can Google it. It's a quote about the, that that don't discount the few um, who are crazy enough to are, think they can change the world. They're the only people who ever have something. To, I'm paraphrasing, but they, yeah, that's uh, exactly what I'm saying. Point man. well that, received. That's the way. Yeah, that's the way, it, this is the way it works, you know? And not only that, but remember, when we're looking at the bifurcation point of like, like, uh, and that, that, like the, the 3% rule, like when we're looking at a school of fish, when we're looking at a flock of birds changing directions, even though that's a, 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 a conglomerate of thousands and thousands of individuals, they're all moving as one being, right. but only 3% of those birds are controlling that movement. Right, are deciding which direction they really want to go in. 
exactly. And, and that's that's it. It's man. not any different like, with you human are beings. And not only that, but you claim it. Right. Claim your power. Claim your power and know that just like Angela was saying, that's not Angela. None of us here are our names. Right. We are infinite love, intelligence, energy, having an experience on this plane of existence. I just happen to be having an experience in a, a male form in a water suit. Right. A male form water suit named Bill Church. <laughs> right. And if you want to put anything yeah. after the I in your self identity as an individual, as an I consciousness, put the word will after it. You know, I because will. then you'll really see what can happen. You know? I will church. <laughs> That's my name, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. In this case, it's literally true. <laughs> That's right. And you got to look at that stuff too, man. And uh, I mean, the beautiful thing about life is that life is beautiful, man. And that we... And that's why I'm I'm getting you. I'm kidnapping you, Mark. <laughs> One of these days, dude. We will. We're gonna go out in the wilderness, dude. We're going out. Uh, I think we're gonna go. To I want to make Canyon, I want to make time for that for sure. We're we're gonna make it happen, man. And it's gonna. We've been planning this for years, and but, dude, I just can't wait. Um, I mean, even in Phoenix when we were down there, mm -hmm. you know, and driving across the country sure. and stuff, man. You, you just are. You just become a different person, and especially when we get out of, especially this this city that's really, really full with um, human, it's a human world, right? Full of right angles and stuff, uh, human contraptions yep. and noises and, and energy and... And, um, and false beliefs, et cetera, the, yeah. And false beliefs, false, I mean, dude, I was driving down 95 the other day, and there's a big billboard with Texas, the shooting of Texas, you know? Um, our hearts are with Texas or something like that. And I'm like, man, this is the programming. This is all present. And it reminds me of They Live. If you guys have not seen the movie They Live, that would One of my recommend favorite that. movies of all time. With one of my favorite yes. pro wrestlers of all time, Roddy Piper, who did a yeah. great job in, as an actor in that movie. Yeah, Rowdy, Rowdy, yep. Rowdy, Roddy Piper. That's right. With the pi with the one of the best villains Jake. ever. <laughs> yep, Jake the Snake. Then yep. he, they did. Let's take another call before yeah. we start getting yeah, into right? the wrestling. <laughs> All right, let's hear from Jennifer. Jennifer, you're live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Bill Church. What do you have for us? Hey, Jennifer. Hello. Hi. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So my question is, if there's a group of conscious people in this world that are supposedly conscious, don't they, can't they come to an agreement on what's right and what's not right according to natural law? Like, is it still a debate well, I in people's mind what rape and murder is? I think the conscious people in the world have done that. The only conundrum, the problem with it is that they're scattered to the four winds of the earth. They're not concentrated in any one area. And then it's our job to help spread that awareness to other people in our area and keep spreading it until we all come together as a human community to understand those things. Right now, so few people are, are at that level of consciousness, unfortunately, because common sense is so low and mind control programming is so high and has been that way for thousands of years that uh, the, the, if you looked at the conscious people on a map of the world, it would be tiny pinpoints of light, light similar to the stars in the night sky scattered all over the earth. And there would not be any big clusters of them anywhere. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, if I look at the dynamic from my understanding, that is how I, I see it. Um, Bill, your, your take on that first part of Jennifer's uh, call, and then we'll, we'll let you uh, ask something else as well, if you want to. Well, I'm, I mean, so, and it's and it can be boiled down to simplistic. Don't steal, right? We 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 profess that, and and basically, it's like once you're once you're unified in a community, and and, and especially of higher consciousness people that understand natural law, it's pretty obvious when somebody doesn't belong, because they say stuff that 
you know, like the taxes, property taxes are legitimate or something, you know, that can be easily flushed out, right? And then that don't steal, you're talking about rape or, or murder, I think. And It's, it's very obvious when to. someone doesn't understand first principles because they will advocate right. for something that directly goes against first principles. For example, as a computer expert, if someone, uh, you know, who I know has very low knowledge of computing says, oh, just do this, and I know that that will end up with a catastrophe, um, you immediately know they don't know a lot about computing. It's like you don't you don't you don't need to flesh it out a lot. You you, you would look at their what they're saying to do and realizing that's not going to work. You know uh, that that's going to make things far worse. Uh, you know what their skill set and their 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 level of awareness about how that thing works is. It's the same thing when it comes to natural law, which is unfortunately what creates somewhat more tension and division between people because the people who are very knowledgeable are not trying to tell them you're wrong to make them feel bad or to put them down. But it's the same dynamic. Like if I told somebody, look, you don't know what you're doing with that computer. When I worked at, I worked in um, a, 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 you, uh, an Ivy League University's School of Medicine division troubleshooting scientific computers in science laboratories. Okay, so think about the level of technical proficiency you're going to have I to have. I grew up in a city. No, be quiet for a second. Mark. You're always yelling at everybody. You always are yelling. Uh, but I got some shit to say too. The women are tired. And you know what? It's not going to change because I grew up in an occult. I grew up in a cult uh, church. I grew up with a cult city. And nothing is fucking changing well, because hold, people are scared. Hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. What has changed already? Has anything nothing. changed? It, no. So, to a certain Greater extent. To a certain extent, more people are aware now than were, than were aware 10 years ago. Is it enough? Is it enough? Obviously, there, there's many, many, many people who are cowards out there. And guess what? Some people want, believe that the right answer is to try to stay hidden and not do anything and not drawing any, draw any attention to themselves. I see that dynamic over and over and over again. Okay. You're correct about that. I'm not going to debate that, but let me make my point about when you have a knowledge gap, because that was, that was the first thing we really started talking about on the show. And you're yes. sort of reiterating it with your first question here. So I want to flesh that out a little bit more. I was a technician in, a science, lab, in science laboratories at an Ivy League school of medicine. You would imagine you would have to know a lot about computers to do a job like that and to troubleshoot computers in that type of a field. Now... What I, what I was saying that me and Bill were alluding to, when you know that people don't know what they're doing, or when you know that there's a knowledge gap and you know that they don't know first principles, when people left positions there and they had to refill the positions with new people, they would bring in interviewees and they would say, you're going to monitor their work they're, they're going to attempt to do certain jobs and you as already a person who's doing this you're going to try to train them guide them through it see what what they're capable of see if they're competent and then if they are we'll hire them and we'll give them a position and they'll be in charge of this division and that division when i would sit down with certain people they would be right like fresh out of university okay and they would have studied computer science or something like that and then you sit them down in the field and you say, okay, the job today is we're troubleshooting this computer. We're going to figure out why this isn't working right. Many times when I saw what their approach was going to be, and I knew not only is it not going to work, but it's going to add another problem. You're going to create a new problem on top of the existing problem because you don't know how to solve the problem. And you're flailing at the wind. You're grasping at straws. You're trying to pull something out of the air or out of up your ass to try to fix something because you don't want to just sit back and say, I have no fucking idea how to fix this. I don't have the, I don't have the knowledge. But you're trying to impress somebody so you want to do something, right? When the real answer is, I, I, this is out of my league and I don't, know, I don't know how to fix this. 
right? The best, the best no, substitute I for don't knowledge. Agree. I don't agree. I think that through we need to go back in history from the beginning where men have been supposed to be the protectors and they have failed us. They didn't protect us in any war. I'm They're, not disagreeing. I'm protector. not in disagreement. I, I call most men president. total cowards. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. We we you have know, my, to stand up. You could look hold, at hold and say no. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree with you. I agree with you, right? Most men are cowards. I talk about this all yes. the time. We should have already been in a, a, a physical combat revolution, revolutionary war 2.0 already, okay? The problem is, where does that cowardice come from? It comes from what they've been taught. It comes from what they've learned. It comes from what they've taken into their mind. Not just men have done that. Women have done that to children. Men have done that to children. Educators, false educators, so-called educators have done that to children. Priests have done that to children and, and other clergy in different religions. New Age movement people have done that to people. It's a complex set of variables over who has instilled cowardice like that into people. But what I'm going back to is I had to literally say to someone, I'm sorry, get up out of your chair and don't touch the keyboard and mouse because it when we let people who don't have the expertise to do it now that doesn't mean don't train them right but the mm. instructions i'm given is see what they already know right so in seeing what they already know am i going to sit back and go continue 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 and they fuck up a whole system or worse they fuck up something on the network right accidentally and then that fucks up multiple systems right or that fucks mm -hmm. up data that multiple people on the network need which we can't allow to happen right it's the people who know have to assert their knowledge which is what i'm doing on the show when you say i'm yelling i am telling people what i definitively know not what i believe not what i have some wild eyed optimistic belief ass. You're a hard ass. Right. But guess it's what? But it's guess what? I, There's a difference. I appreciate Here's it. the difference. Let me explain the difference. Two things. One is first what Bill said is secondary. It's my show. S but first and foremost, I'm right. And that's what matters definitively above all else. Be right and then be as loud and as assholish and as as totally fucking hard ass as you want to be but make sure you're correct first and i am correct i have the correct dynamic which is why i should be listened to and i'm not such a humble fucking new age bumpkin like some other people that i'm not going to tell you that i know that i have the solution in hand and that i should be listened to that doesn't make me anybody else's ruler that means the dynamic that i am discussing i definitively understand because i've run it through the trivium model to the point of ad infinitum fucking puking to death over knowing it's definitively correct through the proper truth discovery methods. That's the reason I'm a hard ass about it because I'm around other dumb motherfuckers who don't know want to implement solutions when they haven't run it through the fucking trivium and it's going to make matters worse. Just like the dumb fuck straight out of university who thinks he fucking knows something trying to fucking make an improvement to a system and is going to fuck it up that I have to tell, get the fuck up out of the chair. You don't know what you're fucking doing. That's the difference you see. So... I understand what you are saying, and I am in agreement with you to an extent. Yes, most people are going to do nothing because they're cowards. That's why it is left up to the people who are knowledgeable and, and most importantly, have the answer correct. If you don't have it correct, don't act on it. That's why the person coming in, sitting down at the seat, trying to get the job, only gives a fuck about the money, doesn't really care about getting it right, hasn't gotten it right, is going to still make an attempt to do something to fix something, quote unquote, when he's fucking it up further. Instead of saying, I don't have the answer right, 
I don't know what to do. Someone who does know should educate me. See, that's getting out of ego and saying, I don't want to make matters worse. I want to get the cor answer correct first before I act. That's getting your grammar under you and your logic under you before you employ the rhetoric stage of the trivium. My instructions when I was in this position were, let him try his rhetoric. See what he can do. Don't let him do a lot of damage, but assess what he can do. He or she, there were many women who tr tried to take these positions as well. And while I was instructed, while I was their quote instructor or uh, assessor of their capabilities, not one person made it through the gauntlet. And not because I think I know better than everybody else. I legitimately gave them a chance to prove that they know what they're doing. Every single one was incompetent. The people who did get hired got hired from other departments and other divisions. And, but what it shows me is so few people actually have true competence because mm -hmm. they, they played the game of fake it and the idea of fake it until you make it. Fake it till somebody gives you the position where you're making money. Fake it till you're in the administrative position where you don't really need that much technical knowledge. You could just boss other people around. The answer is we have to become so deep in our level of knowledge that we really do become experts at it. And the problem that me and Bill are discussing here is most people don't have that esoteric l level of knowledge, nor do they have the foresight to understand the real dynamics in employing the answer and employing the solution. And if we put the rhetoric before the grammar, if we act before that knowledge is fully in hand, we're not actually solving the problem. We're adding to it. So I hope that's clearly understood to the caller and other people listening. And then I understand your frustration, Jennifer, but we also have to put out there that there is some progress being made. I believe me, it's too fucking slow for me. I'm in full agreement with you there, my friend. I'm in full agreement with you. It's way too slow. And on this trajectory, we're not going to get the job done, quite frankly. That's the answer is having a fully defeatist attitude is not going to get the job done. We need an attitude of realism, not wide-eyed optimism of some new ager thinking, that, oh, it's all love and light and we don't need to take any action. We just need to observe because many of those fucking idiots actually still believe that nonsense. Okay. And it's not total doom and it's forever destined to be like this and we can't do anything. Neither one of those perspe perspectives enacts the correct solution. They're both defeatist attitudes. One is a defeatist attitude by not acting. One is a defeatist attitude by thinking no level of action is sufficient and can actually turn things around. It's untrue. It can be turned around if enough people inspire people to actually get the knowledge and then do the right thing with it. That's what has to be done. Not necessarily totally take a defeatist attitude because then everybody's going to say, why the fuck should I get out of bed in the morning? Why should I learn a fucking thing? Why should I read one book? Why should I watch one documentary? Why should I listen to one podcast, let alone a fucking thousand that I need to to really understand what's truly going on inside me and in the world around me? Bill, your take on that. Well, I, everything you're saying, except for just knowing that after we have come into agreement and solved some problems, other problems pop up. And this is an organic type of evolving process, but it's also how we engage with each other as well, right? And I think that we can, I mean, there is a way that we can communicate and there's, um, there, there's a way that we can communicate where we can really, really cover progress and we don't have to fight and and the understanding too of like look there's different dynamics out there as well like and i remember i mentioned you mentioned men not protecting women and i just want you to let you know like my wife is a concealed carry everywhere you know she's my protector in the age of firearms it, men don't address. need to protect women exactly women can exactly. protect it's themselves a, with a gun that can clap that's an aggressor right, right out of life and they could be an 80 year old woman they could be 
you know, a, a younger woman that is very slight in their build. You know, you could be you could be uh, 90 pounds and uh, totally petite and, uh, you know, uh, ha- have hardly any power in your body and still clap out a 300 pound guy. You know, firearms are the great equalizer in that respect. So, you know, uh, nobody should be looking in any gender to anyone else for their protection. What protects me is standing in righteousness. Number one is my ultimate protection. And number two, my 45 on my hip with a hollow with a, a bunch of hollow point rounds in it is my secondary protection. And then after that, that that handgun will get me to my rifles and whatever else. You know, but th- that's right. real protection. And it doesn't take, it doesn't take a man. It takes just a finger. That's it's right. To a male or a female. That's right. Or a child or an adult. That's right. Absolutely. So you know, we have to avoid defeatist attitudes in this whole endeavor, right? I, I, am I telling you what seems dark? It seems like we don't have much of a chance. No, I'm telling you what is real, the real scenario. Right. You could look at my assessment as actuarial because I am acting like a supercomputer that has taken so much unbelievable voluminous amounts of data into it and run it through the trivium that it is like an actuarial. OK, and you could you could say, oh, he's full of himself, whatever. You could say whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter to me. I still know that I have the correct understanding because I've used the real truth discovery process to get there. It hasn't been a distorted belief system to get there. Right. When you use that, it becomes like a computer and the, and the computer is not biased. It's just going to give you what the real answer is, whether you like it or not. So I don't look at myself as an optimist or a pessimist. I don't look at myself as some new age fucking head in the fucking clouds, you know, uh, you know, woo woo person, nor do I look at myself as a total doomer black pillar, right? I look at myself as a realist that is trying to communicate. This is the dynamic. This is where we're at. This is what's going to be required to reverse the dynamic and make it better. And if we stay on this trajectory, we're definitely fucked. And Absolutely. those things are simply true. They're not coming from a positive perspective. They're not coming from a doomer perspective. And that's what more people have to understand. And you're never going to understand that unless you have enough knowledge. The knowledge is the gap in everything. The, when I say, and yeah, I yell about it. I get up in people's face about it. You don't know what I know. And that's the problem. You don't know what I know. Most people don't know what I know. And that's the problem. And yeah, I'm going to be loud and I'm going to be sometimes a fucking asshole about it. You don't like it? It's very simple. No one's required to listen to what on earth is happening or Mark Passio. You shut it the fuck off and you go watch something else. You go listen to somebody else. I'm not interested in whether somebody likes what I do or not. I'm not interested in whether somebody believes that I'm correct or not. I know the truth of the matter and I know the dynamic and I know what is required to solve it and change it for the better. If you don't believe that, I don't give a shit. Go do whatever else the fuck you're going to do and you're not required. Nobody's forcing anybody to watch me. Okay? so And I'm very open about that. And I'm just, you know, I'm who I am about it. And it isn't going to change. If nobody likes it, fuck off. Okay. Very Mark simple. Who he is, That's man. it. And, he, and, and this is who he is. You know, not only that, but he's passionate. And, and, and know that belief systems are very important because any new information based, like, it's not going to be taken in as the information. It's first going to be held against your beliefs. That's before it's that's right. Disseminated. That's why so belief systems why have to be destroyed. I don't have any belief systems. I only look at what is in the actual realm of nature. This is Abur- the solution. Observe, observe that which is. That's it. That is where truth comes from. The truth is always there. We're just missing it. We're not perceiving it correctly. We're getting the answers mm-hmm. wrong. That's why I'll keep going over it endlessly ad infinitum. The most important thing in all of this is to be correct. If you're not correct, you're fucking up. 
If you're not correct and you try to act, you're adding to the harm. Be correct I've first. I've always wanted to, I've always had this question like somebody was like, "Are you just a right fighter?" And I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I am. Why would you want to walk around holding on to tr shit that's like incorrect?" Right. It's like, yeah, I am a right fighter. I want to know how this world exists. I want to know the uh, the truth. And go back to episode number it, one. Truth is what is. It's what exists. That's right. To believe Not that truth doesn't exist is, is solipsism. If we if that's we right. base our actions upon what isn't true, then we get bad results. If we align our behavior to what is true, we get good results. It's not that complicated actually to figure out. It's our hard fucking noggins are in the way of allowing the understanding to come into ourselves. When you do that, you'll develop a realist mind perspective. You won't be a doomer and you won't be a fucking wide-eyed optimist, new ager. Both of the, those groups of people are never going to help enact the solution. They're drawing people away from the solution, which is the middle ground. You could look at the doomer as the left-hand path, and you could look at the new age fucking imbecile as the right-hand path. They're not on the middle path. We got to be on the middle path, which is the straightest road on the ladder to God, the straightest road to higher consciousness, and that's being a realist. It's not looking at things from too much of a bleak perspective and not looking at things as we got this solved in the next 30 seconds perspective. Neither one of those are true. We got to accurately assess. That's why actuarial studies comes in, into play. So, so importantly, be your, be, we have to form like an actuarial understanding of what's really going on. This, this eliminates that? belief. It takes belief out of the equation. Then you could be a realist about where the dynamic is. They don't have everything totally locked up. If they had everything totally locked up and there was absolutely no way to fight them, do you think I'd be on the fucking air? Do you think I'd be sitting and wasting my fucking time talking into a fucking headset, into a fucking microphone? I would be... Planning the contingency of how I might survive whatever's coming, if it's possible to survive it at all. But I certainly wouldn't still be trying to morally educate human beings. If I thought the, the whole thing was totally hopeless, and sometimes I feel that way, but I know that it isn't, I would not be still trying moral education. I would be fully putting all my eggs in the basket of warfare, combat, and survival. And I've just told people, I don't think that that's the right answer. The right answer is most of your eggs in the basket of moral education. Some of your eggs in the basket of combat and survival. Bill, your take on that. Um, geez, I'm, I'm kind of disseminated at all, but you're absolutely right. And not only that, but just knowing that, that we can, I truly think we can figure this out, man. I think of that course. the problems of man, uh, are created by man. And so they're, therefore they can be solved by there. Do you ever think I call that, that the good news. People? The good news is we've that done is this to ourselves. We can undo it. It's a matter of will. That's, right. That's it. And people and can develop the will if we influence them. Yes, go ahead. That's right. We need to have an optimistic mindset. We have to know that we can do this. And we have to always strive forward towards that end goal. And even if it, if, if my earthly body doesn't last till, till we reach that goal, um, I'm working towards it. And, you know, imagine if, if you had some of these actuary computers or whatever... And actually, this just happened with the COVID data. The actuaries came out with like 24% discrepancy with deaths with people that are 18 to 25. And it's usually like a 10 to, or excuse me, 2 or 3% discrepancy. And they're looking at a 24% yep. discrepancy. Yep. And these actuary guys are like. They know. They're, yeah. they're, they know, but, but they don't. It's not like, oh, I don't believe this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they have like, the data. They have the true data. They, right exactly dude and it's not it doesn't your belief this doesn't require your belief and that's that's the the truth does not require your belief in fact your belief system is is going to make it much more worse man it's going to color and, everything that comes after that because as the old saying goes whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't either way you're you right you are correct and you know what man 
do you know what I say to people? The best substitute for knowledge is silence. Yep. And learn. Yep. Don't don't talk don't about that true with, present moment awareness, quieting the mind so that it can be filled as a vessel, without a doubt. And know that sometimes we have a reticular activator. We have a psycho cybernetic mechanism in our brain. And our brain's purpose is to keep our body in homeostasis, but it's also our behavior, it influences our behavior based on our neural network and our experiences that we have. And to, to know about that, to know about the technolo technological marvel that we all have, which is this body, and to know the functions of it, and to know that even though I'm being filled with doubts, fears, anxieties, that it might not be real. And that I might be stepping out of my comfort zone and learning new things and building a new neural network. And the byproduct of that is a month of discomfort because you're changing that belief system. The polypeptides are flooding your body being like, I don't know, man, doubts, fears, anxieties, doubts, fears, anxieties, doubts, fears, anxieties, until we really, really get a firm understanding about that which is and, and, that's why and I how to people, deal with that problem and then that creates new pathways and, yes, they're, and, and often they're more powerful than in. the old right remember that we're filling in the gap here man we're here we need to be here how do we fill this in and this is how we do it it is um you know just realizing how the brain works the comfort zone how that's established how to break out that comfort zone, what you're going to experience, and using mindful awareness to become higher consciousness. You're going to feel uncomfortable sometimes doing this work. And that's why we need community. That's why we need people that we can rely on to be vulnerable with. And, and we need to build up a, a strong, broad knowledge base within the community that we're working in. You know, with neither right. a woo-woo or doom mentality either one of those is is going off into uh la la land as far as i'm concerned you know and i know people yes. accuse me of being uh more doom oriented sometimes but it's not the world is just in that dark aspect and i'm trying to accurately explain to people just how dark it is sometimes i don't even think i go far enough in explaining that but um you know it's definitely not a doom perspective otherwise i wouldn't be on the air trying to change it Let's hear from Patrick. Patrick, you're live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Bill Church of the One Great Work Network. Welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Hey, Patrick. Oh, great. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get two points across. Uh, in the beginning, you uh, told about the uh, CEO of Pfizer that he um, was saying that yes. he wanted half the populations. That video, unfortunately, was edited. He didn't really say that. He said he wanted to have the people that um, can't afford the medicine. So, um, uh, interesting. so that you're saying that that was a product of video editing? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Okay, I haven't, Correct. I haven't heard that. Yeah. I'll look into that and see if that is the case. Yeah. You can, you can find the whole uh, interview um, quite easily. Okay, um, Thank on you, YouTube. Patrick. Yeah. Well, that's how, that's, right. that's how we set each other straight, too, man. And just be like, yeah, okay, we'll check it out. We'll look, we'll flush this more thoroughly. Thank you, Patrick. And the other thing uh, I wanted to point out is, um, uh, I heard you uh, often talk about the immune system, which is kind of like a term um, from the. I'm kind of nervous <laughs> being on the show right now. <laughs> um, uh, is the term uh, out of the germ theory, which is uh, false. And um, I kind of wanted to recommend the documentary series uh, the viral delusion i'm, fam and, I'm um, familiar with it i mean i i think that that doesn't mean that we have ways of fighting off uh agents that come into our body that is a natural process whether you believe in the uh germ theory of disease or not um you know if I, i'm referring to quote immune system that doesn't necessarily mean that i subscribe to that theory it simply means that there are mechanisms in the body that can heal and cleanse the body when it comes into contact with with agencies that uh make it perform uh a way that it shouldn't be performing so i don't think that you know we need to take it at that uh you know literal of a belief in you know uh, germ theory of disease etc um, so just want to say that, but I understand what you're saying yeah. and I am familiar with that documentary. It's a good one. 
Violet, yeah. like a, like like the color or the plant, the violet. No, viral, viral. Viral. Okay, yeah. I've misheard you uh, there, but I haven't delusion. seen it, so I I will definitely check it out. The viral delusion. Cool. And uh, maybe some book recommendations were uh, like uh, Virus Mania and What Really Makes You Ill. Yeah, I uh, I know to, the book What Really uh, Makes You Ill. That's a good one too. Um, there's yeah. another one that talks about how uh, infectious diseases were given to people and they couldn't transmit the disease. Um, that was uh, mm. the Invisible Rainbow, which is another good um, yeah, yeah. resource. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot we still don't know about how uh, functions like that work. But what I do know is that if you uh, put uh, proper nutrition in uh, high nutrient density and you eliminate toxicity, uh, your body's going to perform optimally. It's very simple truths that we have to go with uh, regarding how things like that work. work. Um, you know, instead of getting uh, caught up in uh, a lot of uh, complexity when it comes to that, which is I've tried to uh, clear that up with people many, many times. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of What on Earth is Happening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to my special guest, Bill Church. Check him out on the One Great Work Network. Remember, government is slavery, and we'll see you right here next week. Thanks, everybody. Closing everything up. Hold on.